Oh, man, we have a little technical difficulties. What's up? Welcome to Phalanx. It is episode 16. I am Jason Farrow, one of the hosts of the show, I guess. And uh, we got a uh, pretty awesome panel today. We have uh, my buddy Jerry Challen from E4 Comics, who will be riding shotgun with me today because Chris from Homebrewed Comics, my normal co-host, is uh, running a little bit late. He's got another, uh, he's, you know, he's right in the middle of a Kickstarter, so he's got some uh he's got some promotional stuff he's doing so he's right now on another uh youtube i believe doing a live so he'll be jumping on when he can now let's introduce my co-host and uh right here and boom there he is jerry what's up jerry what's hey, up everybody same, how you doing you're in the same sweatshirt no pressure right i mean like oh what's the, you know i got oh. the best color though <laughs> yeah, yeah. i'm making yeah we, we have to yeah right I'm, I'm making a green one, but I keep telling you, I'm totally making a green one. But, hey, what's up, Pops? Pops is in the uh, Pops is in the chat. What's up, Pops? What's up? How's How everything going? Doing? All right, uh, we're gonna introduce uh, another one of our panels, the uh, regular to the Phalanx, Dennis Valencia from Slate Comics slash Ferris Creative Series slash Celestial and Night yeah. Fame. Hey guys, Dennis, how are you? And uh, what's up, buddy? Good to see everybody. Uh, Jerry, it's yeah. been a minute. And Jason, as always, a pleasure, as always. Yeah, you say that, but I know you don't mean <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, So <laughs> Anyway, so we got we have a newcomer. Uh, he's actually a double newcomer, I guess, because he's one of, uh, he's brand new to uh, the Savage Sandbox. Uh, he's one of our newest members. Uh, a man who I've been following his... Uh, his, his his career, his creative endeavors. He makes uh, I I own every single one of his books. Yes, right. Pat on the back. Boom. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, Drew Lenhart, and here he is, Drew of Snowy Works. Hey What's guys, up, buddy. Thanks. Hey, how's it going? What's up? Another dude? first. Another first. The first time the failing. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for welcome having me Welcome to the madhouse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the shit show is a better term. But <laughs> madhouse also works. Uh, obviously, it's been it's been, I was the, a little bit of hiccup when we first started with the uh, I was running a thirty second countdown a second time. Like I don't know, I had a brain fart. Shocker! It comes with age. I will be turning fifty next week, so it comes with the territory. So we don't clap for that, Jerry. Half uh, a century, bro. Half yeah, a century. Yeah, 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 half a century. Awesome. Jason, I'm right behind you, man. I'm right behind you, so don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, when, yeah when you, I'm when, right there too, man. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. 13 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah. 13 years. Well, Dennis, when you get there, I'm gonna, we'll drive down and meet halfway and we'll have some Jameson or something. So. Dude, we, I think in Vegas. 50. We can do that too. Dude, we can do that. That's yeah. what I'm thinking about. Right. I'm sure airline tickets are probably a thousand dollars right now, dude. Road trip, we'll road trip it. Yeah, <laughs> I'll drive Route 66. Let's go. <laughs> that's uh, so. I, I just want to welcome everybody that's tuned in. Uh, we are streaming on the uh, on our uh, other Facebook group, the Creator Warehouse, uh, the Creator Wheelhouse, I should say. Okay, Warehouse. Even though I created the group and I literally called it Warehouse, the Creators. We have house, and uh, we're also streaming, I think, on the Arrow's Creative Studios page page or my own personal. Page. I don't know where we're streaming. Yep. We're streaming someplace on Facebook. But if you if you're seeing our faces, one, I apologize, and two, uh, <laughs> maybe learn something from really? the creator. <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's Dan. There's Dan. Dan's in the chat. Dan, but, man. Uh, well, all right. I apologize for my face anyway. I always tell you, I was like 30 miles <laughs> on a bad road. So. Uh, so anyway, so today's topic, right? We uh, we were discussing this earlier. It is developing a character for your comic series, uh, whether it's a your lead character, it's a supporting character, or it's you know even just an ancillary character. Uh, we're very this. We have a good panel uh, today because we actually have two writers here. Uh, we're not, you know, I mean, I'm a writer, Dennis is a writer, but we have two legitimate writers yeah. with Drew and Jerry. So, uh, Collins, <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I mean, I write, you know, Dennis writes, but it's a different thing when you are literally a writer by trait. Like, that is something that you, mm -hmm. you know, you, and that's, uh, that's pretty impressive because unfortunately, like, and I'm sure Dennis can attest to this. For me personally, when I'm writing, I'm also constantly going over 
like my wheels are turning for art they're turning for everything else that i do i i'm jealous of the singular focal point but mm. i you know i i do think and i'm sure jerry you or drew could an- answer this but i do think that you're constantly obviously as a writer you're you write the script out and you're you picturing the panels in your head i'm assuming right mm-hmm. like yep. most of us oh, okay yeah. <laughs> and that's like and so and, and now for you for me it's easy because i do it and then i'm the artist right so i look at him like yeah it doesn't look right i know exactly what i'm going for but you guys use artists to bring your creations uh to life and uh, so do you, sometimes I'm sure that's a lot of back and forth, like editing, you know, like trying to get somebody constantly to, to understand what your pitch is. And uh, or do you like specifically either, either one of you guys can do you specifically write it out like over overview shot foreground? There's this you do. like OK, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty notorious for um, being a little over descriptive in my scripts. <laughs> So <laughs> there's nothing wrong with over there's not um, wrong with too many details, Drew. <laughs> I, know, I know, but uh yeah, I, I try to be as descriptive as possible, but yet give the artist, you know, some freeway to hey, right. you know, this is my vision. You know, it's not always the best. You know, you may be able to do it in three panels when I gave you nine. So, you know, just you know, make it work with what 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 the vision is, you know. Yeah. Well, yeah. and that's why and that's why I think is for me, it's like it's easy for me because I know how I picture it and I can draw it. Like that's why I said, the, 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 like for you guys, like I, like I, I always always wondered about the process, like how much of like Jerry. I know with your book, like you have went through a couple of different, you know, trying to get your artist to find different, and you really see the way you wanted it because the way you see it in your head, right? Yeah, because even doing issue zero, I did picture things in my head, but at the same time, I was kind of like. I guess you could say I was still learning the process of creating a comic book. So I left a lot of it in the hands of the artist, you know, and it's now that I guess I'm, you can say I'm kind of coming into my own, you know, with all the comics that I've been reading, you know, your guys' books and everything, I'm starting to see the different angles. So I've gotten a bit more involved in how I want certain things to look at, you know, look like how I want the characters to move. To the point where now I'm like sharing pictures with right. my artists of either me, my kids in certain positions, you know, in a certain fighting stance that I want to see so I can help the artists see what I'm seeing in my head. Yeah. So. yeah. I, I kind of think of it like, you know, you're like the director of a film. So you're you're mm-hmm. the create you're you're the creative person of, of the movie. So, I mean, that's that's kind of why I am a bit descriptive on my things. I want. I want to see my vision, you know, and get input from the artist as well. Yep. Because hmm. I hear, Mike, it gets boring. You guys, I guess you and Dennis can tell us. I hear it kind of gets boring to artists when you tell them everything to do and give them, like, no creative, mm-hmm. you know, freeway, you know, to put in, like, their vision of it as well. So by continuously putting other people's vision out, you know, I had a few artists tell me that it can get exhausting and boring for the artists doing it. I'm gonna so. I'm gonna answer this one only because I did Jason's epilogue in Hunter's. <laughs> um, <laughs> so that was that was like <laughs> that was, that was perfect timing. That was, right that was point, perfect yeah. timing. He just like <laughs> boom. Um, so yeah, like for me and. and I'm a control freak. So just working for Jason and doing panels and Jason, I, if you could refresh my memory, I remember doing panels or doing a page and shooting it over to him and thinking it was good. And then he said, no, but I want this right here. And I want this hole in the wall over here. And I want this angle from the dumpster over here. And I know for me it was like, Oh, and I was like, Oh, like that's his vision. And that's my job. My job is to fulfill his vision and, uh, present it in the book to meet his vision. Um, I think that's one of the things too, when we, when, you know, as independent creators, we can make our own vision. And at least for myself, I can draw and make my own panels the way I want. I, you know, you start reading the mainstream stuff and it drives me, you know, at least me personally, it drives me nuts when I see some things or read some stories. But I think that's the beauty of what we're doing now. Cause we have so like total control, like for my book, you know, from the pencils to the inks, to the colors, to the writing, hundred percent me. So I can control every little stupid thing in it. And if it doesn't hit, 
it's on me. If it doesn't hit, right. it's okay. It was me. Um, but I'm a huge control freak. And I know working just, even that's one page for Jason, I just remember feeling so good and being like, send. And then I send it and I see the little bubbles where Jason's like <laughs> seeing it and I'm waiting for him to respond. And this at the time, right. Jason, there was, um, I, th we had another member on the team and he was like, oh dude, it's awesome. And I'm waiting. And this is like, I think it was like 11 at night. And I'm waiting and I'm waiting. And then Jason comes in and just, and he didn't rip me, but he was just like, I want this here and I want that there and I want this here. <laughs> and then he sent me what his layout of the page would be. And I was like, done, got it. But that was me learning, it was a learning process for me. One, yeah. learning, working with a creator. And two, well, I, um, it was, and Jason is notoriously known for the details <laughs> and how he wants, and, and you know I'm not right, I'm not wrong. Nah, no, I'm not, I'm but, not disputing. And there's what nothing wrong saying. with it. Yeah, there's, and there's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. That's his his character, and I'm wrong to represent it right. So, you know, at that moment in time, like, that's how it should have been done. I think Go what ahead, was Jason. happening. But, well, no, what was happening with that? To put context on it, yeah, I like I had now that you have Hunter's Moon, you saw what I was seeing, like from the the panels of the convictor in that particular with the dumpster and the wall and all that yep. stuff. Like, I wanted it to be as close as perfect because I pretend like I'm reading the book. Cause I'd be the guy that read the book. I'm like, that wasn't there. That yeah. was over there. Like I'm an asshole like that. When I read, like, I'm like, I'm, you know, it's just because I am, I am meticulous like that. And we've talked about this, I think on before about how we like continuity, right? How it's like, I like, if, if he's got a rip in a suit here, it better be in every damn panel, mm. you know? And, uh, that's how I am. And so that's why I had to line up for me. But like, once you got it, like you got it, it was perfect. And it was exactly what I wanted. And, uh, I just, you know, just had to line it up. I mean, there was nothing wrong with what you did, and uh, and for sure, because obviously I liked it. And um, but yeah, it's just it's just kind of what you do when somebody else is. I've never, I've never experienced that. I've never had someone say, "Hey, can you change this? Can you do that?" I haven't been on that, end, you know. And uh, I, I think at some point I probably would like to be on the end. I say that now, uh, do something <laughs> for someone and say, hey, "This is great," but can you do this? You know, what I mean, I, I would, I think, I think personally, I, I would like to try that. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> How can well, we like make that happen? When I did your celestial nice peep, remember I asked you, I said, "What?" You know, you're like, "No, do do you do you do whatever you gotta do." I was like, "Oh, thank God." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, "Man, no, I want you to do this. I want you to have this." And then you're like, "Oh, Jesus!" Because I was like, "He's gonna totally, me, he's gonna totally pay me back." <laughs> but uh, but you didn't. You're like, nope. You do you. Just whatever you see in your you know in your mind's eye, put it out there. And uh, yeah, I'm like, okay. But you know what? You nailed it. And I actually made that scene in my book. You know, like I took that that I one just, scene you well, made and put it in my book. Why? Well, well, thank you. But you know, I told cool. you like when I when I wrote the, for your trading card, like that's just how I just pictured it as. I didn't know much about the character, but I know much. I know enough about you, so that's how mm. I, I went with that. And well uh, done. So it was good. I like well that piece, actually. It's all digital, too, so I'm pro proud of myself. Oh. <laughs> proud of you, bro. I'm proud of you. <laughs> so I got yeah. a question for Drew. Yeah. Uh, you have multiple books out, like different books? He's got all the books. Not multiple. Man's got like wow. 13. Well, you got like 47 books, Drew? I've been doing this a long time, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what's your main um, comic? What's your main issue? Uh, the main Is series it? that I'm Yeah, the main series. Yeah, so Caspian Porter is my love for sci-fi, my love for like 1950s, you know, like that mm -hmm. whole throwback and the old space uh, space opera type stuff. But uh, yeah, the character and his uh, robot, you know, kind of go on a wild adventure through time and, and all these kinds of crazy things. And uh, yeah, that's that's my main series right now. And I hope to keep that one going for a while. So since this is about creating characters, how did you create Caspian? Uh, oh, the hot a, seat. That's a hot seat. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> We're 16 minutes in, man. Yeah. <laughs> We're actually late. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, he, uh. he really wasn't a character that I was really planning for. I had kind of this idea for this book that spawned from a cover. Of, of an anthology I put out like a, like a year prior, but um, it was literally a, um, like, uh, Jason, you probably have it. Like I had a, a cover for an anthology. There's a dinosaur on the cover and there's a yeah, spaceman and a, and a savage woman. 
and literally that's how this series started it was straight yeah. from that cover um there really wasn't a whole lot of uh you know character design or what but it really um you know kind of came its own as i was writing the story and i kind of had the end goal in mind where i wanted to go with it mm -hmm. and honestly i was really only going to do one one issue with this but i kind of left it as mm -hmm. you know you know a cliffhanger but yeah like this this series has really been um at it as it started you know really kind of off you know off whim here mm. No. Who's your artist? Hey. Uh, his name is Juan Fletes. Yeah. Juan Fletes. Oh. Yep. So how do you go about making a character like that with your artist? Do you like take that? maybe images from other create, like, you know, creative characters? Hey, I want this hair. I want that nose, you know, this outfit or anything like that. <laughs> Uh, this, this character, no, this, he was completely created by the artist and he just got it the first time and we just rolled with that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Ooh, that's yeah, a blessing. We got, we got lucky on that one. Yeah. Well, you have your other series that I'm a massive fan of future sci-fi tales. Like that is like, that's my jam. Like I. Oh, you, you like I, the, sci the anthology yeah. short stories? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I just, and I like that some of them are connected. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I thought that's pretty cool. Like, you had the, uh, you know, you had the one with the, I, I'm having a brain fart, but the the rats. Oh and yeah, like yeah. The, the space yeah. rat, like they're connected. Like, and then you, I actually have that book of yours, the actual written book. I got, yeah. like I said, I got them all. I got yeah, them all, man. Them. Well, holy crap! <laughs> I got them all, and uh, and I even got like so. I said I have all that stuff, and mm -hmm. like I I noticed that do you have some, you know, connective tissue between them which is kind of cool you know uh because you know like we're all trying to build universes and stuff and if mm -hmm. you can always like attach one thread to another thing it's always fun as a creator and a writer you know it's just something that you're like okay it's it's just something maybe the reader will, will pick that up maybe they've read the other book or maybe they said hey mm -hmm. i i know what that is i've heard of that that outpost or you know or whatever yeah. and um, so that's cool like me personally that's the stuff i like yeah, yeah, I love the Easter eggs. Yeah, yeah, just trying oh, yeah. to hide. Yeah, trying to, I can't think of it now, but I did hide an Easter egg in Caspian somewhere. That references that. Fun. So, <laughs> yeah, they're all over the place. Like I told you, Caspian Porter is the best-selling beer. The number one beer in, yeah. in, 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 in Gut City. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember every, that. Every, everybody loves Porter. <laughs> Genius. What about you, Dan? How'd you? finally create the celestial nights uh see it's crazy it's gone through so many you know and and uh, and like jason mine started when i was a kid you know mm -hmm. um so this for me it's not like a legacy character but it's something that's been in my head for years and here i am hitting i'll be hitting 52 and finally my book's coming to print you know mm -hmm. um so the character has evolved over time i think you have all these character tropes so you know you have um the cape, you have the anti-hero, all these character tropes. So, you know, it was kind of like, I had my look, I knew what I was aiming for. Um, I always love everyone's pitch. Like Dan has a great pitch. I'm like, Dan, give me a Bigfoot's pitch. And he's like, it's like this, it's like that, it's like this. So I go, so what's my pitch? So I was like, well, mine's kind of like Old Yeller meets Rom the Space Knight meets Family Guy. Rom. Rom. Yeah, I have a dude, Rom, yeah, I have so a Rom like, boy. Dude, I still Old have Yeller. my Rom action figure. What I'm saying, like, if I say Old Yellow, you know, boy and his dog. Yeah. If I say yeah. Round the Space Knight, you know, armored guy with, you know, you know, mm -hmm. in this, in the, in the celestial, you know, in the Celestials. And then if I say Family Guy, you know, it's just some stupid humor, um, some off-color jokes, yeah. and some stupidity. Mm -hmm. That's me. Uh, so you know, I I use that as my pitch, um, and the characters has evolved. So for me, what was the main focus of the character? Once I had my cape, I, I chose the cape instead of the antihero or all the other tropes. Here's my cape. What's his main focus? And for those who don't know, and I haven't left a lot, and I, Jason, I, I hold this up to you. Jason's let so much lore of his character on his lives that more people know about his character from the lives than from his book. And it just makes sense because, yeah. you know, for me, my Kickstarter, I got 106 backers. That means 106 people are going to read my book and get to know my character. There are more people on these lives, on my streams, on my interviews who know about the character than are going to read my book. So yeah. I should be doing what Jason did. I should be talking about my character out, telling the story about the character. Here you go. So here's my character. He's a cape. His whole thing is about protection. Um, his whole focus is about protection. He couldn't protect his father. He was too young. 
his he protects his dog. His best friend is his dog Norman. You'll get the guys. We'll get to know Norman as I kind of leak these information out. It's all about protection. He protects his sister. He couldn't protect his mom. Now he's going to protect the city. He's going to protect Times Square. Why is he going to protect Times Square? And this is where the story evolves. So you get to know the character. You know what he's about. Not only is he protect Times Square in New York, he's going to start protecting the world. Not only is he start hating the, the you know the universe and the different galaxies. Why? And that's where I start you know leaking my stories. The the interactions, the characters that kind of build his character. Um, and then all these things come to a head, like when you start to learn a character, like not everyone's going to be Superman. So what is his weakness? How is it relatable to everyone? And that's where my wheels are constantly turning. Like, I want this guy to be relatable. I want there to be consequences. And Jerry, we talked about this way back in the beginning. Like when we talked about Invincible, mm -hmm. there are consequences. People die. People get hurt. There's blood. There's destruction. But is there ever a consequence? And that's one of the things I actually dig about Marvel sometimes, the movies. There is a little bit of consequence, you know, mm -hmm. like the government gets involved and there's this follow up on that. That's what I want. I want more in-depth stuff than instead of Superman saves the day. Uh, hey, there's an alien on your planet, but you're not really doing much about it. Like, I really want a lot of that. And through my stories and through the little interactions, um, I hope to get that to the, you know, to the readers and to the readers, to anyone who's on these lives, to anyone who's following me, to all of my followers. There's so much that I've just been in here that I'm sure you guys all have in here. Um, it's crazy because you guys are so way ahead of me, you know? Like you took this and just, you know, verbal diarrhea on a page. Um, and that's where I'm like right at. So I'll get to more of that before we wrap up today. But like, you know, like, and I've always been like, I'm going to be the last guy because I'm following everyone else's lead. Um, all you guys, just following your lead and how you guys laid out your plan and just taking all your gold nuggets and trying to make this book um, the best, you know, best of my ability. But... When it comes to the character, that's my guy. He's a cape. He's about protection. He couldn't protect this person. He's, he loves his dog, and I love my dog. And I don't know if anyone else here has pets, but it's about protecting, and it's about protecting his sister. You have the same dog, Dennis. Yeah, I know. Right. Well, yeah, <laughs> well okay. not that dog, but I got – yeah, we do have the same dog. <laughs> it's creepy. It's really creepy. <laughs> um, but I think – you know what's crazy? I was thinking about this because um, – as I, I started learning my, you know, you know, you start writing your character and just certain words about your character. And then one, of, you know, first word I said was protector. He's a protector. And I think we all can relate because that's the whole thing. How does it relate to all you guys? Whether you're a father, a brother, uh, a son, we as just, even as males, it's about protecting our families, protecting our own, protecting my wife, protecting my kids. It's about protecting. And even as just as like the pressure of, and I brought this up, like it gets psychological, that, you know, as a husband, how much we are just ingrained to now protect our, our family and our wife. Sure. It's, just, it's, sure. it's, it's part of the title um, and how much pressure that is. Um, but there it is. There's that word protector keeps popping up. And that's my guy. He's a protector. And it started when he was young. And even the panels, I think one of the pages I shared with you guys in the early, early days was as a little boy. He's setting up that goal of being a protector. His father is setting him up like he doesn't realize it. And I think I might have shared this, shared this story on one of your lives, Jerry. I'm sorry, I'm going on a rant. No, no, no. Uh, okay. Rant is what we do. <laughs> on, I think Go, one of the boy. interviews um, <laughs> we did, Jerry, back in the day when I first was letting everyone know about Celestial Night, my background is I went through a lot of shit when I was uh, younger. Yeah. Um, I lived in a bad neighborhood. They didn't like Asian people. I got abused every day. Um, it was ugly. But that was the thing, you know, that was my superhero story. And I use this story as a relatable story, as a protector. I'm in fifth grade. My sister's behind me. There's a bunch of kids across me throwing rocks, hitting me in the face, calling me chink and gook and all that kind of stuff. And I stood there and took the rocks in the face because I was protecting my little sister. And that was it. That was my origin story. That's it. And it's something that's that little story that I can put in a book. Not, not that I would, but those are the little stories that you put to build that character. And mm -hmm. when you say protector – then I can relate. I'm like, yeah, I can relate to that. And if I say to you guys, like, hey, my character's, he's a protector. He's a protector of the planet. He's a protector of New York. He's a All you guys can relate, just as a father, as a brother, as just as a male. Mm -hmm. Jason, you live it every day. Jerry, good Lord. You know, <laughs> both of you yeah, guys, really, I know, yeah, live Jerry, it every day. Jerry. Both of you guys. Jerry. Um, Drew, I don't know what you do, but I know these two guys <laughs> live it every day as protectors. Um, and it's something I just wanted to make sure I can relate. Um, once you know about the character, once you open the book and you're like, yeah, I get it. Um, and that's the hard part. I think the hard part is relating to the reader. 
I think a lot of that is lost in modern books. I think a lot of the characters that had it, like I'll use the Punisher, you know, like he's so kick ass, you know, like I can relate. You killed his wife. Like, fuck, I'd go kill everyone too. I'd get all the crime. And, but after a while, you know, there where's that motive? You start to lose focus of what that, 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 that gear was. <laughs> um, and that's what I want to get to you to, to my readers and to my followers and to you guys. Um, I went on a rant, um, but yeah, no, I think fine. that's where I look at all you this guys is, and, and where people you are, are learning about th how you developed your character. Yeah. Yeah. Good how stuff. you guys go <laughs> yeah. into, and it's funny when this topic came up, which by the way, fantastic topic. Cause I was wondering what we we're going to talk about in the Felix. Um, I thought about the guys with multiple characters, you know, like Jerry, I know you got a crew of four and I know they're related to your friends and fam. Like I get that, but there's more to it. Like, God, there's so much more behind those pages behind those faces. Not only that, how do you translate it to an artist to represent it? Because that's one of the things I'm ranting. When I drew a page, I just did a page. I finished a page the other day. And it was just me telling a story. I didn't, no words, no bubbles, nothing. The body language of the character I drew on the page told the whole story. And I was like, nailed it. I knew it. Yeah. I looked at it. I could see he was, he was upset. I could see he was depressed. I see he was um, concerned. How do you guys do it with, like, and I'll use Jerry, for example. He's four characters. Getting that to an artist for to represent what's in here is yeah. bananas. I can That's barely you, handle exactly. it, me doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and even, I thought of Chris too, like he has all these different personalities in his <laughs> face and he's trying to balance all that to get it on a piece of paper. Um, just really, really uh, stuff that I think, I feel like this discussion could probably go on for multiple streams between oh, yeah. all of us and how we develop our characters. Jason, when I, I look at yours, like yeah, like, I know only so much, but we should he's definitely so do that. yeah, he's so intriguing as an anti-hero that I want to know more. And I've learned more from your lives than from your book. Obviously, it's one book, but that's the thing. Like, that, there's so much intrigue into it, and just knowing you, it's so you. I can't wait to see it on paper. You know. <laughs> All right, rant over. Right. Well, listen, let, me, let me just take off for that. Like, right. yeah. cheers. Good encore, job. encore. Yeah, yeah. Now you said about you finished a page. Uh, Chris is in the green room. I'm gonna nice. get him in a minute. Uh, you say you finished a page, and the page has, uh, you know, like you didn't have any much dialogue. Now, anybody's read my book, you know, dialogue is not one of the characters' strong suits, uh, <laughs> and I write it that way on purpose. Because I don't, he's just a kind of person that, and I, again, how I created him, he doesn't talk like me uh, outside of this bullshit, of course. <laughs> but like, for real, like you see me every day, like I don't talk unless I have, like, unless I have a reason to, like, I just don't, I just don't, you know? So, you know, I think there's pieces of ourselves in our characters a lot of time. And uh, so I kind of, but you know, I figured with him, like, just like you said, you wrote a lot of the times convicted does a lot of communicating literally with his eyes. You know, if he's if he's squinting, he's two things. He's either processing what you're saying or he's going through the, the motions in his head on how he's going to beat the shit out of you. Like, that's just how he that's, you know, so if you see his eyes squint, there's something going on like that usually is in, in, indicative of something really something really is, you know, somebody's getting their ass beat more than likely or he's, you know, again, he's processing what's said. Like, that's how I try to choose to convey him when I because he does talk I'm not saying he doesn't talk but he doesn't talk a lot uh, he actually in this book I wrapped up now like he he talks more in this than he does in any other book because my goal when I first started because again the convictor is a series so when I started writing it and again it's a character I've had for Chris I say I'll bring you right in uh let me get Chris in. he's over there he's like fidgeting you can get fidget cube in a minute there he is all right Okay. Uh, any, anyway, so uh, well, welcome, Chris. I, I, I'm in the middle of my rant. Hold on. So, <laughs> we all get a rant. Yeah. <laughs> my rant's over, Jason. Yeah. But you know, so I you know it's it's a series, and I wrote it as so each piece, like Chris is layering layering a lot of the, a lot of the pages now, so he knows like each. I, there's more information in each book. I don't put it all out there, like I. I, I was speaking to Chris about this, I think, the other day, and I said, I don't, personally, when I open a comic, I don't know how everybody else feels about it. You open a book, and it's like issue number one of the character. If it's not an origin story, you know, which I steered away from, because I believe that origin stories should come later. 
you should really be attracted to the character first and then be wanting to know his origin. Because if the first issue is an origin, it's it's hit it sometimes it hits its mark, sometimes it doesn't. I just felt like it wasn't the way to go for the conviction. I wanted to start him literally in year two of what he's doing, right? Uh but with what I with him is like I leave bits and pieces because I don't want to give too much. I don't want to open a book. I've read comics, I've opened a book. And it says just the character, and they give you a bio of the character, like literally in the first page, like we're on the inside cover. Oh, Victor, I've been doing this for two years, and blah, blah, blah. Wife is dead, and blah, blah. No, no, let's find that later on. Let's learn that through reading. Let's learn that through this, the, the books. And, you know, somebody had did a review of Hunter's Moon and had said, well, he didn't give a lot about the character, but, but I have a feeling that's coming. Because I gave a little bit, you know what I mean? Like I didn't come and say, for, that's how I do it. Like I want to sprinkle these little things because it's going to build up to a very large arc. And uh, like Dennis says, his character is a protector. The convictor originally was a protector. And then he literally became a killer, you know? So there was a difference there. You know, he was, he was started off as a protector and then went down this in completely downhill, uh, you know, circle in the drain type thing. And, you know, will he get out of that spiral? Possibly. Or, or will he continue down it? Like, that's where I'm going with it. And, uh, and that's all, you know, I think that with that's, I, that's purpose. That's purpose. Because I want him to have a story arc. The story arc can't be for my character that, hey, I'm here. You know, I'm an avatar for this god. I kill these people that deserve it. You know, and that's, that's my role. That's not his role. That's a little bit of who he is right now. There's a much larger trajectory for the character. And, you know, and over, Chris, I think I've told Chris about it. Chris is the only one I think really knows. There's an overall story arc for the character where there's, you know, you know, retribution is the thing, right? That is what I talk about the character. Always using retribution, right? Everything's retribution for him. And that also will apply to, applies to him as well. At a certain point, so you know that's a little spoiler, I guess. Take it where you will, but that's what happens. And uh, so enough with me and my talking, and I am done. Chris, rant you, over. You, yeah, rant over. I'm done. <laughs> Hi, I am Chris. <laughs> Drew's just sitting there like, "What the f did I get, <laughs> what did I I get into here?" <laughs> Jesus, I would have never accepted their invitation. <laughs> These guys <laughs> never shut up. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Christ. <laughs> no, it's good. good. It's good stuff. Talk a lot. <laughs> you sure have a lot of words that come out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All these words. That's right. The guy yeah. doesn't talk, but yet he literally set everybody like set the stage for Instagram lives where you just sit there and talk at a camera. Yeah, for an that's hour. Ridiculous. <laughs> I could never get to that I level. I can list a thousand times I have tried to call you, and you have talked more than me, and I called you to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> but the convictor doesn't talk like Jason. Right. Yeah. But he doesn't talk yeah. much. Yeah. He's the opposite. Wait, listen, um, I'm yeah. talking about my real life. All right, ask anybody who knows me. Like, I don't really talk to anyone. If I real? talk to you, it's because I like you. Like I told you, I don't like most people. All right. So if I'm speaking to you, it's because I like you. I so. We have like we have like plans to hang out this year, like outside of Instagram. So I would hope you like me. Yeah, uh, yeah, we do. Enough. Enough. Um, anyway. so. No so we're talking about creating a character. How you your, you know how you create your characters? And yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. We got a really awesome mix. Got this, and artists. This is how I create characters right here. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. go ahead, say. Good. You guys say like it. being beef? <laughs> there you go. Say it. I swear that should be the next crit shirt. Crit. Do you like? I beef? told you that. That's you it. should literally make that shirt for congregate. You should absolutely have that shirt. And be like, so you like D and D? That way you don't have to say it. <laughs> I'll just put my shirt and be like. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Can I have two Natalie's on the chest, like right here? <laughs> bring, yeah, you do. Bring Natalie's like backdrop, and you can hang off the backdrop. Just a big banner says, "Do you like D and D?" with an arrow. That's all you gotta do. I'm Check out these right books. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so what did I miss? Sorry, I. I, uh, I yeah, I, we know big time. Yeah, we got it. We know. <laughs> so Chris, know. what's your process in creating your characters? How did you create the characters of Crit? So my process is clearly different than everyone else because I didn't create my characters. 
What's up, Facebook? Based off of, I'm not sure uh, why it doesn't show their name. I think it drives me nuts. <laughs> it's probably Natalie because I think she's it's just here. Facebook user. Like, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it's a ghost. But <laughs> it's Zuckerberg. The main character is in my book. <laughs> yep, that's Natalie. She's I am Facebook user. I know her <laughs> um, the main characters in my book are all based like they were created by my mm-hmm. friends. So they were given, you know, character sheets just like in you know the player's manual. They had the base character stats, and then they built their characters based on them and they're every one of the characters in my book are role played as them so they made crit i make all the side characters and the enemies and you know like i made samedi but samedi was really a torture device for austin who's specter because he's allergic to cats so what better way to torment the the guy than give him a familiar that's a cat you know um Yep. <laughs> yeah, so it is her. I was right. Um, so I'll, I'll talk about my NPCs, like my side characters, because even in the world of Crit or in any comic book, your main characters are important, but that bigger world is what really keeps everybody in- interested. I'll use Boba Fett as an example. How many years was Boba Fett one of the most you know famous characters in Star Wars, and he had three minutes of, se- of screen time? Right. Um, right on. So, I use I use a lot of like that that kind of dynamic when I try to create a side character as someone who looks interesting and can intrigue people, but doesn't distract you from the main team. And um, like Richter, uh, you know, Richter is really based off of a friend of mine from work. Just so happens he's gruff and he's a military vet. And uh, he loves to talk shit to people, so it worked well for that character. And um, later on in the series, I actually get to create myself um, as an NPC. I am the number seven. I just go by seven, seven of 12. No Star Trek references there at all. Uh, <laughs> um, my character is part of a larger seven brother. <laughs> yeah, but like it's kind of, I based that idea off of. Um, um, that that movie that's also based off of a comic book, The Kingsman, hmm. where uh, the, uh, the name of that person is, it transcends just the person. It's a role. And so my character just plays a role. And um, that's what I try to do with every one of my NPCs. They, they play this different role. Their job is to intrigue the reader. Their job is to carry the story. But their job is not to distract from the main story. When I've created, say, you know, Samedi, he was there to attract the reader to something else, but not distract the reader from my main characters. And my main characters are my best friends. They're they're if they dropped out of the campaign right now, I could probably continue to write them because I've known them for some of them I've known for twenty plus years now, and be easy to sit there and write their dialogue for them. Um, you know, they're a bunch of I- idiots, and I love them for it. <laughs> um, and they would say the same thing about me. You know, we're, we're just a bunch of idiots that love to role play and, and try to do the, the dumbest things possible because it's all about fun. Um, you know, I think the important thing when you're actually building a character is to remember that your character doesn't have to be the best at everything. I think some of the most unique characters are the ones that really know how to show the correct weakness, mm-hmm. uh, that know how to go down and get back up. Superman's intriguing because he's Superman, but the the problem with Superman is always who fights Superman, right? The same thing goes for like the Goku, like who fights Goku? Who's more powerful than Goku? Because Goku is always going to be more powerful, right? Or Superman is always going to be more powerful. Characters that are intri- intriguing. I'll, I'll even use Spawn for an example. When I try to think of a character that I want to, I would want to base something off of. When Spawn came out, he had that power meter, right? You had a countdown. Mm-hmm. That was like his weakness. Was, like, I don't want to use awesome. my power, or I'm done. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what made him even more intriguing than the cool costume and the cape and 
the shoelace through his face. That was badass for a while. Uh, <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> but he had a weakness, right? So when you're creating a character, it's cool to think of the power set that they have or the things that they're great at. But I think it's really interesting to show the weakness. And like Jason said, you know, you don't necessarily need an origin story for every hero because, you know, what is a hero? A hero is someone who comes in and saves the day. Well, why don't we just get to see them saving the day, right? We don't like, we don't like Spider-Man because he's of his backstory, although it's, you know, seeing Uncle Ben die a hundred different times is, 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 you know, great, except for the new version, which apparently didn't happen. But, you know, we all enjoy that, but the reason we like Spider-Man isn't because of that backstory. It's because he's sarcastic, web-slinging, and he's a badass, and he's you know relatable because what he's his weakness is he's poor, right? <laughs> like <laughs> you know, so it's like oh, I can relate to that, um, and that's why he was he was made that way. He was made to be a relatable character, so you get to see him with this weakness, which is his money for one. He's always like run down. He can't really afford everything, so he has to work this day job. And he can't let anybody know his secret identity because he's afraid of putting people at risk. So, like, you know, those are those are really cool weaknesses, and they really drive that home in the series. So, I think if you're going to go and create a character, think of what their weaknesses are first, and then then dive in and let let the power show itself, right? Like, look at any one of your characters in the book, and when they're in a fight scene, and I mean, dude, Dennis's character just screams power, right? Like, just going to say. Yeah, most dude, definitely. Dude, yeah. himself. Like, like Dennis, I don't even want to go into your character design because it's just freaking fantastic. <laughs> that word can describe him. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but, and he makes it, he makes that that moment that you're seeing that suit and you're like, oh, man, this guy's a badass. But then you learn more about his weaknesses and that he's a real person and he struggles with real things, like, you know, how you wrote him. And that's that's relatable. Now all of a sudden you have a character that you're like, oh man, I really want to see how this ends. You know, um, I, I'll say it, I've never really been a fan of Superman. I like the movies, and Henry Cobble looks cool because he's Jack. But never been a big fan of the the guy that's invincible. You know, um, his biggest weakness is he's too powerful to have sex with the woman he likes. You know, like because he might kill her. But apparently that's happened. A few that times. does suck. Yeah, yeah, that's a really. That's a bummer. I mean, that's why they need yeah, Wonder sure. Woman. Right? That's terrible. Yeah, they got Wonder Woman. Yeah, you have Wonder Woman. She they can, forever anybody. Yeah. They can like, break sure. the earth. Right. <laughs> but um, and like like Jason's character, you know, his weakness <clears throat> apparently he doesn't talk that much. So you know, <laughs> no, his weakness is his his weakness is his greatest strength. That's his weakness. <laughs> no. I, I still think his weakness is his dialogue. I've read, I'm, I'm lettering your book. We're like, <laughs> I'm like eight or nine pages in. I, the one word bubble I had for a convictor, you made me believe. <laughs> yep. Right. I, I was, because it was from the old ash can and I just decided I didn't want it anymore. It didn't look right. It's a good contrast though, because Jerry's characters are bigger loud mouths than any. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I'm like, I'm about 10 pages in on his book as well. And I'm like, it's such a big contrast lettering your books. Because your heroes are so so different, you know. Jerry's characters are so animated and vocal, and Jason's, I mean, still animated yet. Like, there's no vocal, right? Yeah. It's just all action. And your guys are like, "I'm gonna be here," and he, Jason's like, "No, nah, just he just does it." It's so yeah. funny seeing the dynamics when I'm lettering your books. Um, and then, like talking about my own characters, it, I use more of a show don't tell aspect. And I say that yeah. I use it because Brad makes me use it. If I had my way, there would be a lot more explanation, but Brad deletes it from the from the dialogue. He goes in when I'm not looking and literally deletes stuff because he's like, no, just, just show that. Don't tell that, please. <laughs> Seriously, uh, I, think, I think we can all agree. When you dropped that first CK design, we were all like, well, this is our channel. So we were all like, fuck, man. Listen, well, not to ruin it, but Chris, I'm about to drop the whole comic on you because the comic is done. Like, the, all the art, the colors, and all of that. And, of course, you get first privy to it. So probably give me till Friday. Uh, it'll be in your uh, inbox, and uh, you can cool. tell me what you think, brother. I've been making strides against everybody's books, and I appreciate everyone's patience with me. So, Jerry, so you, 
you're lettering everybody's books in here. I'm just going to say, uh, I was the first. He was, I, he, bro- he, he broke it on, he broke it on the convictors on his moon. So just so we know. Um, so. That was great. I mean, Drew. Own books, and I'm a little delayed mainly. Well, work, I will say work has just been eating much more time than I anticipated when I took the job. Which isn't a bad thing. It's I only got five more weeks, and then I don't have to worry about work until December. But um, you know, when I got Jerry's artwork, I also should have opened up in Photoshop and looked at all the sizings. <laughs> <laughs> I got 15 pages in, and I was like, "Why is this all screwed up?" And then I had to go back and redo all 15 pages. Um, so Jerry, just an update since we're here. I'm about 10 pages in for you, Jason. I've already shown you yours, and you've already yelled at me about 20 different things. So. <laughs> I just wrote. I just wrote extensive notes. Uh, yeah, I, I read those notes in your words, and I was like, "Man, he's yelling at me." <laughs> and uh, really, really I'm, I'm, before we get too far, the quick does have a weakness. His weakness has red hair. Anyway, keep going. <laughs> oh, yeah, so. what? Drew, yes, I let her read his books. His, his weakness is a ginger. <laughs> I, um, <laughs> I, I do it as a selfish <laughs> thing so I can read everyone's books before anybody else. Um, you know, and it's, cool. it's, 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 thank you, Jack. There <laughs> you go. Jack? How are you doing? Yeah. No <laughs> SSP bias at yeah. all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I got, I got the letter Colt. I'm looking forward to lettering Omen and Dennis. I'll be, you know, lettering yours probably while we're sitting together next month, too. Yeah, man. How many pages is yours? Uh, 31, well, actually 30, you saw the last page of ads, so it's really 31, 31. Okay. Yep. I need to see your script, too, because that'll give me an idea. Jerry's got a script, Jason has some text, um, and a lot of sound effects. (laughs) It's just... Uh, What I write you is a script. It's not overly detailed, because I don't want to overly complicate what you're doing. Oh, no, you're <laughs> I break it. I break it. Down. I can be really detailed, or if I, I stop myself from writing it, so I'm like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's fine. Your pages are flowing pretty quick because most I don't. Of yeah, I don't. Are, I don't want to write all this sub. You know, the 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 extra minutia. <laughs> That's in there. Minutia. Like, yeah, I'm like, oh. me so many times. I thought that was funny. I was like, this guy, man, I feel so bad for this dude. Please help me. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, Drew. So if you, uh, you you have a letterist, so I don't have to letter your books. I, uh, I actually lucky. I do my own. Drew lettering. is the letter. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah. yeah, so you can probably understand my pain. Yes. When it comes to yep. letter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, so Steve McGuire is my star. Art in its own form. Yep. It that is. That's how I do fan art. I don't draw my. I don't draw for anybody anymore. I just do uh, fan art. Is lettering their books. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Toby Maguire is my Spider-Man. Just throwing that out there. Once I saw that scene of he only had bread and peanut butter, a, a tear went down yep. my face. Like I knew that hard time. We connected right there. <laughs> since then, Toby Maguire embodied everything that I liked about Spider-Man in in that time period. I like the uh, the new the new movies, but the writing really carries it. It's not necessarily Spider-Man. It's the action and everything else is just well written where they lost it on toby was emo spider-man yes every, oh, everyone yeah. says that yeah, that yeah. Everybody says that. Man, dance. apparently oh, robert pattinson can pull it off in batman and it's fine so yeah, at least at least when ball. tom holland had 50 villains he had two other spider-men <laughs> <Yeah>. they, <learned laughs> <their lesson. laughs> they balance their screen time better yeah. and really really the the if we had gotten a better Venom in Spider-Man Three, it probably wouldn't have been a better, better movie. But when you picture Eddie Brock, you don't picture the little bitchy kid from that '70s yeah. show. Yeah, all he did was yeah. whine on that show. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, he even left the show because in real life he was a whiny bitch too. So <laughs> like, you know, I can't picture Eddie Brock being that dude. Although, the 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 current iteration of Eddie Brock is pretty badass. Um, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Have you guys ever created <laughs> characters that haven't been used or didn't know what to do with? 
Oh, I have a ton. Yeah. I, yeah, I got an entire, I got an entire oh, notebook from and the 80s. New character, they're like, that sucks. I'm not using it. And you yeah. never see mm-hmm. it again. Uh, have you heard of Clamoid? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, have, we, have, have, I, have we mentioned the clam based robot that I made? Oh my god. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have to do something with Clamoid. Yeah. <laughs> the I anthology, god, like, I, that's it. That's it. Who knows? That little side galactic thing I'm drawing, that little thing I'm doing when at work, he might show up in there. So nice. you never know. <laughs> so it's interesting you say that. Um, originally, and um, some people may or may not know this. Dark Vengeance, the the bad guy, was originally the design and power set that Terrell, who's Boulder, was going to have. He kept going back and forth when we were making characters because he's a huge fan of Iron Man in real life. So when I was making character classes, yeah, sometimes I wonder. <laughs> well, we, got, we got Drew too. He's he certainly like not, no, he's, no longer the only yeah, one. We're not, yeah, we're not, you, we're not. He Chris is the only one that does the SSP. He book. is now. Drew's yeah. like I am in the SSP, but I only yeah. do my books. Let's Nick just put that out there right you. now. <laughs> so, Thank God I don't remember everybody's book, but um, <laughs> not you. So I had, I had gone back and forth with Terrell for like a few weeks, and I was like, well, you like Iron Man, so. When I first started the game, I thought of like an Iron Man style character, you know, a suit of armor. Um, and I was going to base it more off along the lines of like a Mass Effect kind of armor. And realistically, the class existed in D&D. I looked it up and it artificer with, uh, okay, I'm not going to go into the, the nerd language on here. But I was like, oh, this would be kind of easy. You know, this stuff exists. I can just make it work. So I put like a couple days into building that. And he was like, well, I don't know. I really like All Might from My Hero Academia. I was like, oh, okay, well, that's a barbarian monk. I can build that. So I go through, I spend a couple days doing that. And he goes, well, I don't know. Maybe I'll use a suit of armor. And he kept going back and forth and back and forth. And finally, he set on the All Might character because he just didn't think, like, the the Iron Man build was, it was complicated because there's a lot of spells to be able to use missiles and all the weaponry. I had to build it like spells. And he's like, well, I don't, that just seems complicated. So when I introduced Dark Vengeance, he was like, are you fucking kidding me? That's badass. I want that. And I was like, well, you're already like set on your character. Snooze, you lose. <laughs> and that, so that's what I do. Whenever Slip I on make, it. Sorry. Yeah, I'm like, when, pe- when I make something and they don't like it, it just comes back to haunt them later on. Because I'm like, I spent a lot of time on this. We're, we're using it. Uh, <laughs> same thing happens with, uh, so later on in the book, Austin made me build this stupid ass sword that like spoke and stuff. And um, originally we were going to have Austin having a, a his Samedi was going to be a sword that talked to him. I tried to bring that back and we weren't allowed to do it. I don't know why they, they said a talking sword couldn't exist in our universe anymore. But I had this annoying talking sword that just wouldn't shut up. And it was my my DM way of making them not talk and, and like they would want to use a sword because oh, the only the time the sword sword? Would up was when they were using it. <laughs> Cursed screaming sword. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to hate this. You pull out a treasure chest in D and D, and every time I'm like this stupid thing won't shut up. Like you think you get yourself some awesome broadsword, and the thing screams when the DM's like, "Oh yeah, I forgot to pay. It's a screaming sword." Yeah. So, so I did have a broadsword that was a female, and it, it was a broadsword. It was a woman talking oh. to them. Why, why is that to be a broadsword, though? Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh, for real? Chris. It's 2022, bro. See what he did there. I mean, it's 2019. I mean, Jesus yeah. Christ, man. You got a daughter, for God's sake. <laughs> I wasn't. I, I, I was 2019. It was two years ago. I was much younger. Yeah. I was, I was, I was much more chauvinistic. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Sorry. To You're the worst. Yeah, Drew's, yeah. Like, Drew's, Drew's like, I am totally never right. coming on again. <laughs> so I, hey, I don't know if you I don't know if you watch any of these it. before, but this is how they it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Off yeah, I caught yeah. another episode. I, I'm fully prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually me. Dennis says, and I quote, I never stop. Yeah. Never <laughs> he stop. doesn't. <laughs> the saltiest man in the Indies. Yeah. Here he is. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that should be like your award right there. Yeah. <laughs> Most salty. I'm Sergeant Salty. Yep. 
But see, I got you my character. Too, Sandbox that be your character. <laughs> your power is salt. <laughs> salty, salty sandbox. <laughs> The power of salt makes yeah. everybody salty. <laughs> See, that would be a fun book. You know, yeah. we could just uh, have everybody play a character in the book, and we can make comic book out of Savage Sandbox. We just play ourselves. We're good, <laughs> really good. I yeah. don't even want to hear another book until the Christmas one comes out. Yeah, uh, the Christmas yeah, yeah. one comes Drew, out. I remember when Drew got in the chat, and Drew's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> He's like, what? "What are you guys talking about?" <laughs> He's like, "I don't understand." What? What? What, what are you guys talking about? <laughs> it's the idea to Brad, by the way, because I told Brad I was like, "So we have this idea where you're reading a child, like a bunch, the story to a bunch of children," and he's like, "Why would I read a story to a bunch of children?" I'm like, "Well, wait a minute, no." So when you start telling the story. And then I told him about the goblins and all the murder and the blood all over everybody. He goes, oh, that's a story I would tell you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah that, we, do, that, we do need to do that. That would be We amazing. definitely have to do that one. And then the following year, we'll do uh, uh, B-Squad Saves Christmas. It'll be a Christmas. <laughs> got to do the B-Squad, too. All the, all the C-List. <laughs> I think that would be hilarious if we just did a Christmas book every year. It can be short. Yes. It can be like ten pages. Yeah, yeah, like an annual. Yeah. It's just yep. like an annual. That's all. Yeah, no yes. continuity. You know, just a thing. We have so enough fun. people in the Savage Sandbox. We could just contribute like a couple pages each. Talking about characters that you've Here created that you haven't used yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, bro. That's my board of characters right there. I can't reach my <laughs> giant freaking folder. I got. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right there. I have uh, writing all these characters. <laughs> I have all the unused character sheets actually in a in a binder right here. I pulled it out for tonight. I have, uh, I mean, just hundreds of characters that I had built for this game that they either didn't encounter, ignored. I have a NPC that died because they just didn't follow the the storyline, and she was kidnapped by some gang members. They didn't care. They did something else, and so she died. Um, a very gruesome death that I wrote in there for her if like things went wrong, and sadly she had some really cool stuff that she was going to give them if they said if she saved them. The story would have probably gone a lot differently there. I also sure. have um, so so <clears throat> I have this character called David the Gnome, but is uh, he's now David the Gnome. We had to rename another character because I refused to not what? use the Gnome. The yeah, gnome. the Gnome. Um, because in D&D, I always play a gnome, and I always name myself David. And um, I'm usually the gnome ranger. That's what I use, because uh, I, I, I play a ranger in D&D. And I never have a character in our game. <laughs> right? but I want to be like David the gnome, and I'm going to make... And my character was like... Uh, I would I would make all their weapons, and I, I was I was kind of like um, the character from, from Marvel, the guy that makes the Thor's axe in uh, Endgame. Mm. He was like that, but he was a literal gnome. And he could make all this weaponry, and his name was David. And I would name them, I would name my shop something different every time because that's something my characters always do is they name shops. And um, we weren't allowed to put him in the book. They didn't like the idea of a gnome, so they they left him in a building somewhere, and he's just been making things and changing the name of this building probably for about two years now. And I have like a hundred names like built up. Um, I have them written down here somewhere. Uh, my favorite one was uh, uh, Gnome Alone, and it was just all these different gnomes, and that way you could pay, bring them home and never be alone. All the dad jokes. Oh yes. my gosh. <laughs> all the dad <laughs> jokes for days. <laughs> yep. And they burned the building down on once he rebuilt, he rebuilt it. <laughs> all right, we're going to end the dad jokes. <laughs> end the dad jokes. They, yeah, they absolutely hated it. But I was really bummed. I was like, guys, he's literally made some really awesome stuff for you, and you just keep, keep like murdering him. <laughs> Do you uh, like speaking of the NPCs? And he said you had a stack of them. Uh, when you, like, if you're getting to a certain point in the game, or do you like sometimes find yourself like uh, going and searching for a particular NPC to fill a role in the game, or is that something that you usually have that already laid out beforehand? I have a couple go-tos. Um, you know, we're so far into our story that I have characters that would make sense to be in a certain situation. But, like, when we went overseas, they went to Japan. There's nobody that makes sense to be in Japan, 
So I had to create a bunch of new NPCs to be over there. But I tried to connect them somehow to something. Doesn't You don't always have to do that, but it was nice. I wanted to have some kind of reason for them to be interested in what Crypt was doing while they were there. So that was probably the toughest because, again, they're in Japan. Crypt's never been to Japan. Why would there be anybody interested in what Crypt's doing in Japan? So they go to a... Um, anime convention and while caliber's hitting on girls of course everyone thinks that terrell is wesley snipes uh, because i didn't write that part brad wrote that part as a joke on terrell and he's like i'm not Wesley, but then terrell went with it and thought that you know he was wesley snipes so then we had to write in the real wesley snipes and that was like an npc that i had to actually build and create because he gets into a fist fight with terrell and terrell's like i'm gonna i'm gonna pull my punches because it's wesley snipes right <laughs> like so he gets beat up by Wednesday nights. Um, and so a lot of the NPCs, I'll have like an idea that someone's going to be there. And early on, I used to write and put a lot of work in those characters. Uh, Detective Montague is a big one. I, if you read book one and book three, you see Detective Montague. He was going to be a very important character for me in the story. It was going to be someone who I could help build the... Um, another side of so you have alchemic and you have technetic these companies he was this other entity and really they never liked him and so i just couldn't use him everywhere because every time i tried to insert this character they would shut me down so i realized real quick like hey i just need to think on the fly and come up with a reason for someone to be there and make sense or else they're just gonna shoot him a couple times or ignore him or knock him out or give him drugs because that's everything they've done to my characters. Um, it's pretty, pretty chaotic. Obi's gotten people uh, high too many times just to get them to go away. <laughs> coolest one though, coolest random NPC had to have been Wesley Snipes. Um, of that, course, nice. I mean, he's past, your, he's past your 57. Exactly, right. he's Blade. <laughs> yeah, well, come on. In, in Japan, of course, they only think of you know, they're like, oh. He, he's a he's a superhero and he's black. He's got to be late. And, <laughs> and that was that was Brad's justification for everyone calling him um, Blade. He's like, oh, Blade, it's Blade. And he's like, no, no, no I'm, I'm Boulder. <laughs> Who's Boulder? We don't know who Boulder is. <laughs> he's trying to like run around, and then finally he was like, fine, because you know he has sunglasses too, and Blade, and he had the same sunglasses that that Blade kind of wears. So uh, he was like, fine. He just started going with it. He put the black trench coat on and starts walking around like he's actually Blade, and. Of course, he's much that. shorter than Wesley Snipes. I would so say that. Didn't, that. Yeah. <laughs> That's the kind of stuff I do. <laughs> I can't I mean, even be out. mad at that because my old boss at the flower shop, he had a Japanese bar. And in this bar, you have like female, um, I forgot what you like, hostess. Like they sit with you, drink with you, hang out with you. Nope. And me and my cousin mm. went there one day. Me and Shock. Yeah, <laughs> is that what we call them? That's yeah, what that's what they are. Apparently, hostess. Yeah. so me and my cousin shot. Where's this at in New York? <laughs> <laughs> Road trip. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> and we got there, and like the first thing they were asking, they was like, "Who are we?" And my cousin's like, "Yeah, he's a basketball player, and I'm a rapper." <laughs> and they completely bought it. And it was like, oh, wow, that's so nice. And it's like, <laughs> like really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Tr Terrell said the same thing. He could, he could do the same thing. Like, uh, he, yeah. But <laughs> the Wesley Snipes storyline, I was really curious if they wanted to keep that. And I, I was like, are we going to keep this in the book? And Terrell was like, of course we're going to keep that book. I get to play Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I have a, some other cool. So you asked me about some of the side characters that, that I use as like DM insert characters, mm -hmm. and one of them, the green guy from book two, another character that comes back to haunt them because that was a suit change for Brad. Um, the profiteer. Originally, he was Perugia, which is this guy right here. Uh, I just literally used a random name generator, and it came up with Perugia. Perugia? Yeah, yeah, it's an Italian name. He was supposed to be Italian because it's the only accent I know. So when I name characters, they always have to have an Italian name. 
Because like, I only no. have an Italian accent. I can't do <laughs> Yeah. It's a, it's a joke later on in the book. I won't give it away too much, but everybody in North, New Orleans has a has an Italian accent. Um, but they really hated the name Perugia, so I, I was like, well, fine, he's the profiteer. Uh, I just pulled it out of my ass. That's but cool. That guy, name, I use him as like, name. Like when they have to get their butt saved out of nowhere, he'll just show up, and even though he's just a normal dude and you know, uh, Caliber's old costume, he somehow knows how to get them out of danger. Um, at the last minute. It usually involves uh, a missile launcher, grenades, and a getaway car. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah doesn't it always? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when in doubt, use, use the things that you know best, you know? Yeah, Blow stuff up Saturday, and drive Saturday nights like that, my youth. <laughs> yes, yeah, actually, a friend of mine lost his thumb because of that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when we found the uh, Anarchist Cookbook in the CO2 box. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what you want to mess with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's great. It was really bad because my fr- my best friend's dad worked for the police department, and he had all this gunpowder because he he packed his own yeah. bullets. Let's put this in a galvanized pipe. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> yeah. You know what? You know, we could take a fuse from a cherry bomb. What's the worst that could happen? <laughs> and <Yep>. shrapnel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the best part was he put that inside of a glass jar, and then yeah. he threw it. Oh, gosh. This is literally like this is, that's literally the precautionary tales that every parent tells their kids. Dennis, how many characters you got on the side that you're ready to put out? Uh, you know, it's, I don't have much time just because of like work and all that. So everyone I've created at least in book one that are going to go into two and three, they're used. I have no NPCs, no one that I'm not. I don't have enough. I'll be honest. I don't have brain power to create characters that aren't being used. Everyone that I've created in the past is coming into this book in some fashion or form. They're going to change their look, but that back backstory is still there from the past. So uh, you'll see them like as they trickle. You'll meet a lot more in the book than just CK and his dog. You'll, you know, obviously the family. Then in issue two, you start to hear uh, you know, the origin story. You get to see the main villains or the group of villains he's going to wind up fighting. Um, and by the time you hit issue three, it's more of the slate universe coming into there that you know that I've talked about with Nate, a little with Jack. You start to see those powers kind of play into the play of how CK went from just protecting his family to his dog to New York to now he's actually venturing into the universe and why he's going to be actually a celestial knight. So, you know, I I, I, I wish I had more characters that I wasn't wasting brain power on. I'm so strapped with just very limited brain power as it is. It's hard to wrap around my mind around five characters, much less what you guys do when you have break apart all these characters. I look at Jason's, you know, gallery. Good yeah. lord! Like <laughs> the fact that every single one has a backstory. I'm like, my god. Um, yeah. I wish I had that brain power, but I was a bored, yeah, I was a bored child. Away. I was I was very bored. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> he had a lot of time on his hands. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I had a lot of time. Yeah. Like, yes. Media. I think when he started this, he probably chiseled these guys in stone because I don't even know if paper existed back then. <laughs> I, I absolutely didn't. But, uh, yeah, I actually didn't. we uh, I did not. And actually, uh, no. And I'm very proud of my chisel. <laughs> so, so yes, I have I have side characters. I have a lot of side characters, but just for the convictors. But I got when I get into my other character uh, that you know is like Dennis is very uh, outer space oriented power. You know, power suit, you know, galactic protector, the whole bit. When I, because that's my second flagship character. When I get into that, like you will see a majority of these other characters that I've talked about or I've shown through my art book and stuff like that. Like they'll all, most of them have something to do with that. The Convictors world is very small, whereas, you know, the larger uh, universe at play is not. So I'm actually very speaking. excited to see this oh, because Andrew. I know our three no. characters. Oh, Dan the Man! Yeah. What? Yeah. The Man legend. Appears. The yeah. legend. Dan, oh. Dan, Dan, even, Dan even has some ads going on in his yeah. <laughs> Oh, shit. He's sponsored. What the hell? Yeah, what the hell? <laughs> oh, oh, shit, I'm on my OBS still. Shit, hold on. <laughs> no, it's cool. Leave it up. Hold on. Stop my virtual recorder. I was doing a thing for work. All right, there we go. Hold on. All right. That's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> That's too funny as shit, dude. Yeah, that was <laughs> awesome. Hey, you can be sponsored. There you go. All yeah, right. right. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing a thing for work. I had to, I was on a, I had a, my OBS set up for that shit still. Sorry. All good, man. All good. 
I'm so going? curious to see how you guys' world is going to think because I know us three up here, our world eventually branches out into the universe, like into mm-hmm. space. So I'm so interested to see which direction we all take. Or how we the convictor does not that. go to space. Well, not the convicted, but the other characters <laughs> that are in space. Although he would go to space, but he wouldn't say much about it. I'm just saying. Exactly. I had, I had a theory one time that the convictor was an alien, actually. I, I, I was like, at one point, I was going, he's going to be an alien. So he's just uh, a very disgruntled human being. Right. <laughs> that's, that's all he's got going for him. <laughs> what about you, Drew? How many characters you got that you're waiting to put in uh, your books? Um, I'm not really sitting on too much. Um, I, I think for me, I don't really stew on, on the characters as much as you guys probably would. I, I think more in terms of like, I have this awesome story idea. I'm going to roll with that and see where it goes. I mean, I'm sitting on a lot more of that kind of content and a lot of it, you know, I've been sitting on it for years and, you know, a lot of it I'll never, you know, release, but yeah. Mm, Okay. I think that's the hardest thing is having stuff that you can't release. Um, you know, we talk about like the the character, like you know, you have stuff. That's a fear of mine is not being able to release my books, like you know, forty written, and Jason, you know, having you know decades worth of material. I think that's a big fear. And to Den- you know, to what Dennis said, I just had that conversation with my wife today. That is why I was like literally terrified that I'm going to die in the middle of all this <laughs> now that I'm hitting 50 and then I'm not going to have to release anything. And what the fuck am I going to do? <laughs> I mean, Dude, I'm not even your age and I had that fear because my last art I'm literally, it, that it bothers the shit out of me. I'm like, I'm like running against the clock. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Chris. Okay. When I had COVID, you know, I, I won't lie. I was a little bit scared because I had it really bad. And um, I told Natalie if I didn't make it, she had to finish crit. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's already recorded. You just got to finish it. <laughs> That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, all those characters that you have and you're creating. Because even with me, it's like, when my last artist, I was like, yo, we're making a book a year within a year and a half. I'm not getting That's exactly anywhere. Yeah. That's my fear. That's <laughs> like, it right there. That so, is absolutely it. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting those. That is so, it. Yep. To have this artist, where it might be possible to have maybe two, maybe I'm about ready to turn books. this shit over to other people to draw. It's like, yeah, it's like you're telling <laughs> get to the so point like... where I got so much crap. <laughs> That's kind of like my goal is to eventually be able to get, you know, if you overfund enough. I'm not saying one Kickstarter should be able to fund enough, but if I have enough that I can save up over time, and be able to pay an artist to do. So I can have side by side books, then I can release six in a year instead of three in a year, um, and that you know then I'm only at what four or five years before I can put the whole series out. Mm. But yeah, you know, I think that's the hard part is being able to pay artists. None of us want to have just people getting you know, jerked around on work, um, yeah. and it and we don't have the funding like big companies to just put into our books. Yep. Like <laughs> that's the tough part. And we're all and we're all working on these independent titles and we have these these great stories. You know, every single person on this panel right now has a story that either we've read and we've loved and we can't wait for the next book and we're impatient on it, or we see the potential of it like with Dennis's where we're all just kind of like scratching, waiting on that character to come out, right? And Drew, I know you're you're new to the panel. But hell, I have your first books, and well, you have more books than I think than anybody on here at this point in time because of all your anthologies and everything else that you've done. Like you've been able to pull together some great people. But I know, like Caspian, I'm I'm stoked for the new book. Right? We all wish that we could put out more books in a reasonable amount of time. And I won't even talk about Bigfoot because fuck that book's awesome. Uh, <laughs> damn. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was I was gonna lead off onto a question on that is like, you know, it seems like we all like we get our book done, we we get it out to Kickstarter, and then we seem to spend the next few months working on the next the next book. Um, has anybody like thought about like, okay, I'm gonna work on issue one, two, three, and four. I'm gonna sit on the first couple. And until that, four, you know, four issues are done, then like do my release. I mean, has anybody ever considered like a release like that? Yeah, I've thought about it because even with my next three issues, my next three issues will be 
the Dyson Saga Part 1, 2, and 3. So they're all going to be within the group. Um, one is being worked on now. So I've definitely considered saying, you know, especially with the speed my artist is working, mm -hmm. maybe I'd hold off until all three books is done and then yeah. start putting it out. I've considered that. I, uh, I, I didn't consider it with the Convictor because that's like my baby. And like, I literally wanted to put that book out. Like since I was a freaking kid, that book I had to put out, right? Uh, but I have another series that uses a lot of the obscure extra characters I have that I wanted to book, an anthology series that I am not doing all myself. Thank God. Uh, but, and I'm, I was actually, I think I bounced this off of Chris. I talked to you, usually most things I bounce off of Chris. So that I am thinking about doing issue one, two, and three before I would ever take it to Kickstarter because it's the characters, not that I have a lot of fans or anything like that, but it's characters that no no one really knows but so to put one book out on a kickstarter who's gonna care you know what i mean like you'd have to really draw a shit ton of attention to it like i was able to do that with the convictor from for years before i put a book out but these characters not so much so what i would have to do then is it i'd have to use it more of a lore i would think if there was an issue one two and three of this then at least somebody because people like sets you know, are they like, you know, uh, consecutive issues? So I did consider it with that, Drew. That yeah. is one thing I look forward to. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead, Dan. You're muted. Um, okay. So in terms of using other, uh, first of all, hey, Drew, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet um, you too. Yeah. Hey, Dan, we have the same shirt, but anyway, go ahead. Oh, do we really? Yeah, my wife, we went to the New Orleans, anyway, whatever. Uh, <laughs> matching shit for all of us. So, um, it's green. Anyway, it's good color. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, so anyway, um, with Bigfoot Knows Karate, I, when I came up with the idea, five issues, five issues, and I'm out. That was the, as much, art as I was willing to do. Okay. Because if anybody draws a comic book, you know, it's a lot of, lot of work and you want to get the story out. And now I have the whole arc was well, we kept going through all this stuff and, you know, Casey and I were working out, you know, this and that we realized there's a lot of things that we want to show the uh, show, you know, the audience. So I'm in for five issues of artwork. And then we're going to be doing between after I finish book two, there'll be a prequel book that will come out between two and three. Then between three and four, another one that will be a, a short, two artists will work on it because it's gonna be a story from two sides. And then a, and then between four and five, the, the the kicker, you know, the lead into the kicker basically, all right? So, and then we're gonna have other artists doing those side work while I'm working, because it allows the art, the character to keep getting a visibility with and delivering a product while I, my slow ass is drawing the 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 main storyline, so it's kind of it's kind of a two a two pronged thing there. And um, with that being said, I mean, and then Casey said to me, "Well, hey, can we also do an epilogue for in book five, so we can go into book six? And I said, "Dude, I'm in for five Epilogues issues awesome. of artwork. Five issues of artwork. That's all I can do. So the epilogue, yeah, exactly. And so, uh, but I'll do a I'll do a one off here and there. But yeah, we're gonna keep the story going on with our other artists. I think. Uh, you know, in time and, you know, in these prequel books. So, and sitting on both sides of the fence, I've been an artist, I've been a writer, I've been both on the same project. Um, it, being a writer, I feel like you get the advantage because because you can work on multiple stories at the same time, because as an artist, you're really tied down to your desk on one book. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of, it's a lot, a lot of work. And but not that writing's not a lot of work. It's just you get freedom and flexibility that you can't get as an artist. And I mean, I've had two titles going at the same time, uh, you know, three, because I did was doing a late finishing a latex Avenger book while doing Masters of the Obvious, still in the Stan Lee stuff, all at the same time. So it was like I loved that. And frankly, I can't wait for the day to where I can start writing something else while drawing Bigfoot. I mean, I'm looking forward to that because creatively there's just a whole bunch of bunch of stuff that's in here that's got to get out um y'all had your rants this was mine sorry <laughs> <laughs> this is the rant free zone oh no 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 it's a rant safe space <laughs> <laughs> rant away. so no rant away. 
Yeah. Yeah. yeah, all ranting. It's all ranting. It's all ranting all the time. On That's right. No creative verse. Yeah. Rant, creative ranting, 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 ranting. Right. <laughs> I guess we could go into actually you. Um, I was going to say something real quick on that. So my only issue with sitting on books mm -hmm. is you're going to you're gonna lose interest with people. And I actually just talked about this on the show as on before. We, you have to stay consistent putting your stuff out there or people won't care. We're in an age where people get mad that they have to wait a week to stream the next episode of something. Yeah. You know? yeah. So you're making them wait. If, if I can, and I, looking at the way I've been doing uh, book five, I can do a book in two to three months. You know, I can pump out the artwork for, in, a, in a standard 24 page format. This is a big book, so this is going to take me a little bit longer. But if I can put out a normal book in two to three months, well, hell, that's four books a year. And if I'm doing Kickstarter, right, I'm not going to Kickstarter last quarter of the year, so I'm going to have to double up beginning of the year if I want to do that. But sitting on your books for too long, you're going to lose your audience. You might be able to retain some of it, but you're not, you're not going to keep their attention. The reason a lot of these big books are able to keep people's attention is because they're putting out you know, monthly books. I get a lot of feedback from people on Kickstarter, like, oh, I'll just wait till your whole series comes out. Okay, well, yeah, you have five years if you want to wait. <laughs> um, you know, so that's my fear on sitting on books. I think, you know, and I've discussed this, I want to do two series at the same time. So I can afford to pay somebody for four pages of artwork. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have crit, and then at the end, four pages of this series. And it keeps them interested in crit, but it gives them a little taste of another book, and we can continue them side by side without losing interest in one or the other or diverting attention from one to the other. Because that's another risk that you run when you have, you know, and, and this is nothing against creators that do this, but there are some out there that go to Kickstarter with issue one of this series. And then they're like, oh, but we have issue one of this series as well. And then we have issue, and they're going to Kickstarter four times in a year with four different books and then next year they come out with issue two of this book and their fan base for this drops because now they're like well which book are you focused on right and yes they might exist in the same world but they're different characters and if you're like me i don't even watch sports anymore because i can't handle the constant change of a lineup so i'm now you're throwing multiple books at me i'm funding multiple books but i'm not seeing a payoff to my investment right. and not just money but yeah. time so that's my fear of sitting on four books and releasing them all at once yeah um i would if i had to do that i'd probably just go to webtoons and release page of time yeah and leave it at that but um i don't think we're not in a uh in a time where you can afford to just hold out being the level we're at now if you were like look i mean look at the guy who did game of thrones he's been sitting on a book for 10 years it's going to come out and it's going to sell millions because it's fucking game of thrones but none of us are that level right yeah but the audience Maybe Dan. dan's probably there but ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh no uh the uh no but that the, the the audience that we get at this level, they also understand the crafts, uh, the, the, the craft behind it. You know, they, they're willing, they're willing to wait a little longer. They know it's going to be a bit more expensive. They also know that the product is going to be, you know, the paper quality, you know, the, the, the printers that we use are better than what Marvel uses. And most of the time, you know, I mean, we're bringing a better product. And if you're, if you, you know, really, I don't know. And Dennis made a comment one time about, you know, there's Indian and then there's, you know, those the other Indies, you know what I mean? And, you know, that stand up like the rest of the, uh, you know, the other comics, you know, the big, the big two and that kind of thing. That's the level we're all trying to get to in terms of like how good the, the work actually is trying to get the audience. That's, you know, we'll get there. Right. But uh, if we're really bringing our shit, then uh, our audience is always going to understand. I think now we can't be too late. If we promise we're going to come in at this date on our shipping and we, about six months later they're going to be pissed at us and damn right you know or whatever you know my you know the situation so um it's a tough battle but i think our audience understands i'll chime on this so one of the things i'm you know i'm late i'm a good three four months off where i should be 
but my whole struggle was this is my first real book all sure. 100% me and I'm putting like so much of me like where I can actually say this is my first book um, and I don't want to feel like I took I cut a corner I don't want to feel like I, I feel you, know, you I feel you there buddy yeah like I, I didn't do I, I didn't take there. a day I didn't take a day off on a page um, it's it's this real struggle and in the back of my head like my wife said to me like are you, are you done yet I'm like yeah I should be but at the same time, I'm struggling constantly with like. You want to be satisfied with what you, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, yeah, just, Dennis, yeah, I, I, bro, I feel that. I feel it hard. But I think one of the good things I, I built a good trust in the community in the sense that like they know I'm not sitting on my ass, right. picking my nose, wasting time. They, I think I've built a good track record of like they know I'm really putting a hundred percent behind this, and what they're gonna get is you know they'll see that time that wasn't unfortunately there. Um, at the same time, I've learned so much from this one that, to your question, Drew, I have a three-issue arc. I already know how the second issue is going to go. I know the hook. I know the, the story that's going to unfold. Third issue, I already know how that's going to unfold, how it's going to wrap up the whole story. I'm hoping that leads to another series, and I'd love – I know Mo's not on here. I'd love for Mo to be part of that. You know, I'd love to outsource that artist to carry on the lineage at the same time. Anyone who knows me, I love the fan art. I love the indie community. I am dying to get psychotic into Jason's universe. That's my I'm other character. I'm dying to get psychotic into Jason's universe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> dude. I and told you, I'd even push one of my Kickstarters aside for that. Yeah, and the so. crazy thing about psychotic, I already did the pencils for that before CK even came to light. So for me, you know, I learned so much from CK that when I hit psychotic, which I'm planning to do right after this. I've learned so much that I know it's going to be so much better than the pencils I did. Um, but yeah, like to your point, Drew, like I have all these, you know, I want to wrap up my story, but there's so many things as me as an artist that I want to do for the community. I want to do for yeah. SSB. I want to do for Jason. Um, I want to introduce my other character. I want to do his anthology because that story's been in here yeah, for Kara so Shark. long and I got to <laughs> get it out, you know, and it's just like, <laughs> but how can I do that within a year? With my job, with the family, yeah. my boys, they're, they're just, it's its really interesting how I'm going to, like for me personally, I look at you guys again as the example. Like how do you guys do it? I don't know. But at the same time, like I'm trying to figure that out here. Well, right. I'm blessed because my kid and my wife are both creative people. And we're always, like my house, my kid's either playing piano, drawing anime stuff. She's got a youtube channel now where she just draws um and then my wife i mean everybody knows natalie by this point you know she's always doing something artistically whether she's painting or photos or god knows what she's always doing something creative so in my house i feel like i probably get a little bit more leeway with saying hey i'm gonna go draw now right we have our family time but we all want our own creative time so i'm blessed in that fact that you know, I'm not losing time with my family because we're all sitting there being creative. Like that's our energy. Where I know a lot of people don't have that. Dan, you sound like you wanted to say something before. Oh, shit. yeah, that's why I stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. But I mean, to Dennis, uh, you know, I mean, look, there's a thing that I backed a year and a half ago. You know, they're I know they're not done. You know what I mean? There's other stuff. So you know it. You've built up the respect. You know what I'm saying? You've truly brought, built up the respect that the audience, is, again, that the audience understands. It's yes. when, you know, when it's, a, there's, a, I mean, there's three-year projects, seven-year projects. They're never coming out. You know what I'm saying? So uh, the reputation is everything. You've built it with your audience. You, they know that you're bringing the artwork all over the indie community. That's all I was going to say. So with we all the, I have a Kickstarter before you're done with this one. Yeah, yeah, we don't do that. That's oh, a yeah. big thing. Yeah, that's been happening. Yeah. And it, it happens. There's yeah. there's money yeah. grabbers out there. Which yeah, is, I don't. It is what Like, it is. listen, Hunter's Moon, right? Dennis, that was really late. <laughs> and, uh, you know, some, you know, circumstantial, of course, and then everything else. And then this guy adds more pages because he's dumb. Uh, but it was worth it. It's my I story. And it. I, yeah. But I don't care. It's still the best story I can tell with that book. I'm very pleased with it. So, but my point is, speaking about, not that, again, I'm not patting myself, but having a certain uh, a presence in the community, I guess, that, you know, people, you know, I was very honest. You know, people talk, 
Like ninety nine point nine percent of my backers understood. They all understood. Mm. Yeah, and uh, there was that one percent. We know about that, and uh, pretty sure it even backed the book. But anyway, so <laughs> but there was this very. But other than that, everyone's on. And this like resurgence. Resurgence is late. It's nowhere near as late as, you know, uh, Hunter's Moon. But resurgence is late. But typical par for course. It's late. I add pages. That's what happens. So, but you know, it's I literally penciled the last page today. Uh, so that's it. You know, we're good. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm so very if, happy. <laughs> so everyone has experienced <laughs> literally uh, delay with Kickstarter. Has that? Yeah, altered, it happens. It, of course. Has that altered your idea of when you want to launch, like your next Kickstarter? Yeah, yeah like, my next. Do you want to have things? Like, I was going to go in April, and that's not going to happen. <laughs> there's no way there's no way because this book isn't going to start getting in people's hands till april so there's no way i would dare launch another i'm gonna give it a break i'm running no. now it's supposed to be november with jason mm. and i pushed it god thank god i pushed mine back but i was i was like oh i'll, I'll launch in november and i Never pushed again. it to, to now and that was because the book was the book was done like the art was done i could have you know moved on and started doing another book but it took us that long to fulfill because of delays that were outside of my own control and um well yes i could have marked it as fulfilled and just moved on and done another kickstarter and really hey your book when you get it um i pushed it back and with this book when i went to kickstarter i usually give myself 60 days from the time kickstarter ends to fulfill i gave myself 90 this time um I know I'm going to be able to fulfill within that time. I think I just talked to Dan. Didn't I just talk to you about that recently? About, yeah. you know, I'll probably come in at the 60-day mark because I am, even though I'm being hard on myself about time, I'm really fine on the time for the artwork. I think I'll be able to fulfill in May and then be able to launch my next Kickstarter in June. But I want to give myself that buffer just in case my books come in darker than they should again or you know the the figurines take longer to print or something happens because there's always something and i think that's one thing that we have in indie that you don't get on the big guys is because they have contracts to get stuff done on time and right the first time right so they're getting they're like oh we need this this and this they get it we go we ha I, hey i need i need six figures printed and they send me they send me the sample that looks like this, like this. And then when I pay pay the $400, they send me this. <laughs> Do you see a difference? <laughs> <laughs> and then when I say, I don't really feel that I, I can't believe they I whitewash Boulder. <laughs> <laughs> that is ridiculous. Like, that is bullshit. <laughs> Bro, that's an that is ridiculous. Straight bleach. <laughs> you said it. Uh, actually, Terrell said it too. We, uh, when, we the, when we did the live read, I was like, "So everybody can have one of these because they sent me the wrong. They, they sent it to me this way." And Terrell looked at it and goes, "I'm not white. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's Boulder from a parallel universe. It's Boulder. It's, it's always, positive Boulder. <laughs> Boulder will always be the same color because." You, his, he's based off of Eddie Murphy being all might. Like, even though Terrell, you know, Terrell's black, but he, he's always said he's like Eddie Murphy as all might. So unless Eddie Murphy, you know, becomes white, which I don't think that would work either, knowing his com comedic style, he's always got to be the same color. So you can't whitewash Boulder. It just can't happen. <laughs> and, but, oh, so, so that, but that was a big delay for me because I had to find someone that could go in and print those figures and I was I was blessed. The dude that was friends with Obi was like, "Hey, I can do it for you." And he and he did it for the price of shipping, which was ridiculous. Um, it's crazy. Damn, it's I can't people, to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> but oddly, I found a place in town. I can spend like eighty bucks for a month, and I can go there with the and they, I can print as much as I want. Um, it's like a subscription thing, like a membership. Nice. Um, nice. I, just, cool. I just need to get my design back from the designer. Someone's coming back with a Mandalorian helmet. <laughs> oh, God. You don't even want to know what I want to print right now. 
You don't even know what I want to print. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm thinking Spectre masks for next next. Time. Nice. <laughs> there you go. Genius. Yep. Because I mean, that, that would be kind of, it, it, it's simple, it's cool, and really easy to do. Um, and I mean, hey, we're still technically in COVID, right? So you can be, you know, out and about wearing a mask. Yeah, you put a little filter in there and make sure it holds the filter. You're good. Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, I gotta interject. I yeah. gotta drop here for a work thing, so it's good talking to you guys. Oh, yeah, you're you're responsible. See you. you're, yep, yeah, you're guys. An adult. <laughs> Pleasure. Yeah. He's going screw these guys. I'm never. Yeah. Going <laughs> <through this>. <laughs> <laughs> I guarantee you, you take another one. All right, see you. Yeah, really like, <laughs> hey, real quick before, oh, dang it! Yeah, anybody that's watching, he does have no. a Kickstarter that's live. Which he does have on. a Kickstarter. That's right. Caspian um, Porter. Number two, Caspian Porter on Kickstarter. It's right here. Hold on, I'm going to put it up right now. Hold on one second. Yeah, put it in the links. Um, so we'll also share that. Um, let me pull up the. Uh, yeah, the drop it in the. Uh, yeah, drop it in the comments. Yep. Because uh, right now, what I'm realizing on Kickstarter is it's very, very saturated with um, campaigns, and so oh, like November. Well. It's it's almost like everything that didn't launch in November is now launching here. Was, uh, well, yeah, that's what that's what I said. When I this book will be getting in people's hands next month, and that's fine, you know. And I will I won't launch the second book for this until I'm, I'm I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it the following month. I just there's no way. I'm, I'll have to pick a different date, but but I am drawing it digitally, so I should move a little bit faster. Uh, How that? How, real quick, how long does it take y'all? Uh, does does it take you, Jason, to do an issue? You said two to three months for you. Well, Chris. well, if because I'm an asshole, uh, Dan, <laughs> I uh, I usually end up adding more content to the story because as a guy who writes a script, right, I'll write the script and as I'm drawing it out, I said, you know what, the convictor really needs to beat the shit out of this guy for two more right. panels. So that's what happens, or the convictor himself needs to get the shit beat out for two more panels. Right. So that's what happens. 100. So. That's usually what happens, and the story changes. The next thing you know, it goes from a 28-page book to a 36-page book. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so for me, and for me, I'm always good for that. I don't build that into my Kickstarter because I'm an idiot. <laughs> I have learned my lesson. He gets so, angry at it, and then he he gives everybody an attitude around him when they just call, hey, what's going on, man? <laughs> I don't know. I, well, I, I, my, listen, my wife, to be, I've been pretty good with this book. I have not been that attitude driven. Yeah, there's been a couple. I've days. been quiet. I've been quiet. Like, I go <laughs> into my spells where I don't do anything, but I don't chat much. But yeah, uh, it usually, I'm for can, this compared to Hunter's Moon, uh, I made way better time on this book. Uh, you know, so, I mean, just being a traditional artist. So I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. I think it's taken me, I didn't, I really started it. I mean, I've had a couple pages before because I was doing this book originally. Uh, I'm not going to count that. Uh, so it's what since I think I started in September. September uh, yeah, I'm probably about four months because I'm like I'm done now. Only that's because awesome. I added more pages. So yeah, I drew. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a really happy boy right now. So I. Bigfoot number one took me like nine months. You I know, can't help eight, 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 eight months, yeah. nine months to do that book. So that's yeah. so I'm, I'm yeah. wish I could do four months. I mean, that would be amazing. I it's like I said, it was it's only because I was I had the story already because I had mm -hmm. it was an ash can that I did right. originally as a kid. So I kind of had a uh, a I I knew how a lot of the uh, panels were going to line up because a lot of the uh, the kills were the same. They were just, right. they lined up, you know, even though I drew it as a kid in the 90s, uh, still, I kind of had an idea. The dialogue, I kind of had an idea. So it kind of helped me there uh, shape out the panels relatively quick. I mean, I do thumbnail, like a lot of, you know, artists, I'll do thumbnails and stuff, but uh, I have an entire thing that thick of all the thumbnails, rough sketches, panel sketches that I have for this book. And, uh, but yeah, I was, I think I was quicker on it because I was also excited to get to the end of the book. Uh, this is, and well, I think for the whole book, this is very much Hunter's Moon is great. That was a that was kind of a book that I was kind of steered into doing. It wasn't originally supposed to be the seminal convictor book. This was uh, because this literally is the convictor. Like it, Chris has read the dialogue. Like this is not Hunter's Moon, not even close. Like it is. It is the only thing that's similar is the convictor. I mean, the dialogues. You know, the the you know the the. 
the way the vernacular is different, <laughs> you know, the uh, the character, the brutality is different. It's just a whole other thing, and it stands on its own. And that's kind of what I wanted. So I, I feel this is my book. Like this is the book, the convicted book. Hunter's Moon was great. I love that book. I'm proud of that book. But this is the convicted book. This is one you could jump in on, and not have to read Hunter's Moon. Really, you know what I mean? Uh, so I was excited to do this book. I was very amped to do it. I was very excited. And I was very excited to draw the epilogue because, again, it introduces a particular character of mine. And uh, so, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I think that there's a lot of excitement going into this for me. Badass. So, rant. <laughs> <laughs> and breath. <laughs> Woo! All right. I erased, like, two whole pages. Jason was part of that. Uh, one page I before my last. I believe playing for everything. What are you like? What are we married? I mean, you you saw me erase the page because I sent it to you. Oh, you didn't have to erase it. I gave you one. I said, well, that's true because realistically, what you change it to is one hundred times better than the original one. It was too much bullshit in the first one. The second one was way cleaner. Yeah, Uh, it's all perspective shots, and I had to draw a hallway with bodies in it, and. Drawing a hallway hit, by that, itself. That hit the floor. Yeah, right. That hit the floor. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> but getting a hallway in the perspective, even though I use digital art, it's still like not easy because I have detail on the walls. There was blood everywhere and like other things. And there was a lot of detail I was trying to put into this hallway. And it just, it just didn't look right. And I sent it to him and I was like, this just looks like shit to me. And he was trying to give me some things. And I said, you know what? No, screw this. If I have to go in and fix all this, we're just going to. And he, and he gave me this idea to change the perspective from a different angle. And, I mean, that just worked so much better. Um, I was actually able to showcase some of the brutality in the scene a little bit better. Uh, but it took me three more way, days way better. for one panel. Like three. And I had already spent two days. On, so five days for one panel of work. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, when I was done with the page, even the, even the other two pages, uh, well, there's three panels on that page. The first two were both perspective shots. And the second panel I was even struggling with. And I was like getting frustrated just because it's like a downward, like looking from the bird, like a bird's eye view down. And even then I was like struggling with hands and arms and everything. Bird's eye view suck. Yeah. And then the third one is the worm view. Suck. So it was like all worm view sucks there. <laughs> Man, I screwed yeah. myself when I was planning this page. <laughs> I, Bro, that's, I just did this with my book. <laughs> I, was like, same thing. I was like, well, the last panel should be bird's eye, so I could really fucking ruin everything. Right? <laughs> you're like, yeah. like, I got to the end of that page. Most important panel see... on the goddamn epilogue, and I fucking make it a goddamn perspective shot. <laughs> Even Natalie, she looked at the page, she was like, well, you could do this. She's like, it would be like a really minor thing. And I said, no, we're done. Like, colors are going to look great on this page. If I have to, lettering can cover something. Like, I- I'm done. I can't move one line more. I just stretched myself so thin redoing so much and then i sent it to jason and he was like oh that's perfect i'm like all right fine We're, i'm fucking moving on and now i'm on the next page and i'm flowing like like so much better on that one it's Luckily, nice it's one big hurdles. panel with a couple yeah. insets so it's gonna yeah big panel <laughs> insets are the way to go that's how you cheat <laughs> you're like it's kind of like you're like <laughs> i almost was tempted the one time to do uh uh, Hunter's Moon, like it was gonna be like all giant pages with like little insets just to get it done faster. But I mean, you artists, I don't have that <laughs> issue. <laughs> but then I, I look at I, well, I got resurgence. I'm like, twelve panels will fit. <laughs> <laughs> twelve freaking panels. I can't letter a page with twelve panels. <laughs> right, you, you, you already did it. You already did it. Unless, at least you have the power in your hands. So be happy with that. Because like I said, from my last artist where it took an, a year and a half to finish The Awakening, The Elements Awakening, I felt like a battered spouse, all right? Mm-hmm. That was being abused and refused to leave, kept making excuses, and now I finally have an artist and uh, Burden of Truth, the artwork was done within three, four months. Yeah, so, artist is really, really clicking on that book. Like, yeah, like, you know, it was such a relief, you know, What's to cool see is that. your artist have a similar style too so it doesn't yeah. take you out of the feel of the book mm-hmm. that was a big thing i anime. was concerned about when you switched artists yeah but lettering this one i've pulled out your old books and there's some you know there's some differences in style but they really got the feel of your characters um mm-hmm. like they, they did a phenomenal job 
to be honest. I, I was actually impressed with that. Very grateful. Huh. So That's hopefully funny. I'll keep this artist as long as possible. <laughs> Your lettering is just going to be different on this book than the last one. Yeah. <laughs> and it's going to be much better now that this, the pages are sized right. <laughs> exactly. So I won't lie, dude. I, I, so, you know, Dan, you didn't hear my rant on this, but I think they have. When I was lettering Jerry's book, he's very dialogue heavy with some of this stuff because there's a big backstory that's got to be, you know, divulged. And I'm sitting there like, why doesn't this fit? I'm like, Jerry, you're losing half your page to dialogue. And I was getting so frustrated, like I'm trying to break stuff up. And I don't like to take away from the art. So I'm trying to salvage as much as I possibly can without ruining the story that Jerry's written. I'm trying to respect sure. both aspects. Sure. That's kind of my job. My job as a letter is to respect the storytelling, but also preserve as much art as you can. And I was I hit like the 15th page. And I'm like, there is no way that should take up that much space. I open it up. I'm like, are you kidding me? So <laughs> yeah. I, I resized the pages last night. I got to that page that I screwed up that I was so mad at. And I was like, it looks beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was so happy. I was like, I stayed up till 2.30 in the morning. And I was like, I'm going to get through this page because I want to see how this page looks proper. And I was right. like. All right, I can go to bed happy now. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Now I know. All right. <laughs> so as Here, how many issues? Books, oh, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead. I was, how many issues do you have planned for the element overall? Oh, do you man. have an arc for them? I know where the middle is, and I know where the end is. My whole thing is creating all the in betweens because even after the next three issues, the Dyson Saga Part One, Two, and Three, it pretty much opens up like yeah. new characters are going to be you know introduced and you know the story is really going to start to open up so i'll be honest with you i don't really have an end number to the series i literally like the convicted books are going to end at 13 like that's my favorite number i have a definitive start and ending because like, like we're talking about getting stuff done before you die or whatever we were saying mm -hmm. before like that tangent we got on like, for real, like, if I get that arc out and then I'm able at least to put a couple issues of my other flagship here, my guy Triax, if I'm able to put him, put him out, a couple issues of that, I'm happy. I could drop dead. I don't care. Like, the other characters, I don't care. You know, I, I just, you know, whatever. But, like, so, like, I have a definitive end for those books, too, because I just, he has a very, def like, he has a very definitive end. It has a very, trajectory is here, and it ends very, uh, you know, very, you know, just, that's it. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, so what about Dennis? Did you have, you have three, right? You yeah. Like three for CK? Three issue arc, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, CK is like, Dana I see CK showing up in Caspian Porter, though. Wow, that, just yeah. three? That just, awesome. well, three for now, and then I'd love to do some crossovers with D, to be honest with you. I'd oh, love to yeah, do that. Yeah, like that would be bad. Kid Nebula real. crossover would be a yeah, lot of, man. would be a real. blast. Yeah, man. I'm yeah. He got such a kick out of when I put that little I put that little Easter egg in that stupid thing I'm drawing at work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to do that. It's, yeah, it's just it's awesome. It's, that's yeah, that'd be cool because if you fit right in, I think because yeah. I'm really decent. The thing that D put up the other day was or today was just awesome. It just screams mm -hmm. to me like space adventure. His, you know what I mean? He's just growing. Yeah, it's just so good. It's like he's got his so he's he nailed his style down. Yeah, like, yeah, for real. I mean, a year ago, like his, his his coloring has just grown leaps mm -hmm. and bounds. You know what I mean? Like it's just become so much more. I mean, it, it was always it still feels Saturday morning cartoons, but now it's starting, oh, yeah. to, feel, oh, starting to feel further than that in terms of the yeah. artwork. It's it's just becoming. I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. Just you know, just it's definitely you see it and you know it's deep, and that's mm -hmm. that's important. Mm -hmm. You know oh, what I mean? Yeah. Like it, that way, it's like it. That's instant, like recognizable as an artist. You know, for your brand, it really helps too. Oh, Dan, yeah. you're another ex example of that for sure. You know that they see Dennis. Dennis. You know what I mean, everyone's got Chris. Yeah. You know, doesn't really have style because he he has a lettering style. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, you, but no, when you draw, you have a style. <laughs> that was great, I'm just Chris. kidding. No, I don't no. even know. Like that, that's the thing that bugs me. To be honest, you with do you. have a style. Like I can always, I can always tell when you do something. <laughs> because you're very particular like not so much like your heads have a style like when i see something like that's why i made that comment to you about the head turn the other day because that was one of the best things i've seen you do with heads 
you know, because you're ha- and it's, not that you're not that everything, not that there's. I'm not saying that. Please don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is like it was just it flowed. It was the gesture was on point, uh, especially for that's a difficult pose. You know, like the looking over the shore, looking back. Yeah, that thing sucks. I struggle with that all the time. And uh, so yeah, when like I notice with your heads and your the way you do your heads, your heads have a style, and uh, it's. It's hard to explain. I really, it's for me to verbalize it. Does it, but in, in here, when I see it, I say, like, okay, you know, it's whatever. I try to make your, a compliment. Your, your style, to me, Chris, is kind of like a cross between realism, Kevin McGuire, and an action, like The Rock in the action, you know, in an action movie. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like it all kind of, it's that realism. But if mm-hmm. you're no Kevin McGuire who worked on like Justice League, with the heads, what you were talking about, Jason, with like yeah, you know, the, yeah, the, you know what I'm faces. saying, right? Okay, yeah, the, the contorted right. faces and the, yes, the right, looks right. and that sort of thing. And it's not like, I know where you're going with that. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. I've never really been able to pick out my style because it's like I start it and then for a long time Natalie would come in and when you say realism, that's mainly because she would come in and say, "Well, the arm can't go that direction, or you can't do that this way. Like your body just doesn't move." That. And so, trying to learn, you know. I think I've said this before. She told me early on, you can either have your style be that it's wrong or you can learn to do it right. And never so I'm life trying to... What? What? Here we go. That's right. I brought it up. I said, I'm not going to say any field. names. I'm not going <laughs> to say names. But... Can't go phalanx without talking about Rob. So that, I mean, yeah. But that, I mean, that was the conversation I had was because I argued that comic book doesn't have to always be no. right. And I showed it her Rob Liefeld and she looked at all of his work for like a decade and was like, but he's always wrong. So that's a style. So he's consistent. Yeah, he's consistent. Right, he's consistent and wrong. And he's been paid millions of dollars to do so. Um, Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But, you know, it's, it, it, I wanted my stuff to be right because it's based off my friends. Like, Brad was always like, well, that doesn't look that way. Like, that wouldn't look that way. When I, when I show the art to the guys, they're always like, Brad's the first one. Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't see the gun that way. Or I, if I choked a guy that way, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. Like he gives me that feedback all the time. Um, so I try to get it as real as I, as I can with the level of artisticness that I have. Well, I mean, like I said, you, and I've said this before and I'll say here, like you, your art has grown too, obviously. Like most of, I think all of us has, I mean, every, every single person that draws your art's going to, you draw consistently, your art's going to go, Apparently mine did with this book. I don't see it, but you guys have said that, so I take it as a fact because you know you're my peers, and uh, you know, and I, and it's evident in your books. You know, it's 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 definitely like now anime like, series. I guess yeah, before. he definitely it's understands like anatomy. anatomy. You can see he understands anatomy. Like he doesn't struggle with foreshad. Like some of your previous books, like uh, foreshortening arms and stuff, was like for, was like I could tell that you struggle a little bit with that now you don't struggle Cause I, I, when you send me things to look at, like that's the shit I look at. I look at like, all right, this guy's got a foreshortening. Okay. And I'm like, okay, now let's, let's make, let's pick on the, let's pick on the weapons. <laughs> of course. So, uh, let's pick on the firearms. Okay. This doesn't you know, but yeah, I mean, in, that's, but I think that's what we do for each other. Cause I'll send shit to you all the time. And, and, you know, you say, hey, well, yeah, this didn't look like this. And then I'll, I'll provide context to it. And you say, okay, that makes sense. You know, and uh, I think that's just what we all do, I think. Chris has seen all of Resurgence, <laughs> you know, and because I always send all the time. I'm sending each page I finish or have, you know, to a certain, I sent to him so he could look at it. And, uh, you know, just because you want somebody else's view on something before you commit to inking it. You know, as a traditional artist, so and I think that's uh, I think that's what we all kind of do for each other. It's it's important, you know. I, I will say between sending it to you guys, and I've I've got a decent friendship now with with Robert Nix, and I love his style. Robert's just got a really good style, and I I send him some of my ideas. I love his uh, his way of panel breaking. His, his action is just really really well drawn like if you see some of the stuff he puts out so i've sent him some pages and he literally will use a red pen what's up marie <laughs> and send it back to so some of the stuff that you see in my book now i'm like trying to push that and reaching out and sending stuff to you or robert or anybody that i send a page to and ask for feedback on 
I'm hoping to get something to push me a little further because I don't want to fall into like uh, a comfort zone artistically. I feel that if I fall into a comfort zone, it'll get bland and boring, and then you're just reading the same book over and over again. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, hey, really quick, Jerry, you see yeah. that you have licorice in the uh, comments, right? That's uh -huh. Marie. She uh, she's actually lives down by you, or uh, some South Carolina, I think, somewhere by you, Dennis. Uh, hmm. She's she does anime. She does a lot of anime stuff. So if you ever need like posters or anything like that, reach out to her. She's got a really cool style. It fit pretty well with elements. Nice. Uh, she did a convictor piece for the IGG, and I just love seeing anime convictor. It was so awesome. <laughs> I was, so, I was so excited for it. Yeah, no, she's really but speaking awesome. Speaking of styles, I still will never forget seeing Dan draw for the first time. I know, what? right? I We're always going to talk about this. It blew everyone's yeah, mind. because it's so unique. It is this just guy so... doing his finger? Well, my kid does the same thing She on a phone. You know, I see her draw with her finger on a phone. And it reminded me the other yeah, day. Yeah, Gabrielle too. does it too. Yeah. You know, and she's like, she's draw I'm like, I can't. I, yeah. I can't even think about it. My but you got to think about what's pen. more sensitive than the finger, though. I mean, I, you know, the pressure and, and you know, and just there's nothing. Like, your finger is probably the ideal pencil. I mean, realistically. Dan, yeah. Dan, I got to know. Does the name of the or the nomenclature come before the character or is the character become before the nomenclature? Because, like, Chupacabra with a shotgun is fucking dope. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I'm actually I mean, that, you that came actually that. beats Bigfoot Nose Karate. It's like, actually the do you theme think of this yeah, live. Do you think those names like, before you draw I, or do you I, like... I mean, how can I harm these cryptids? How can I... Here's my formula. Well, you know, you had like young blood, blood strike, blood force, blood... The, no. Uh, no, but seriously, uh, yeah, no, I didn't really expect to do this with... This has a that as a thing. That was never really the idea, but it just kind of worked out with the Chupacabra. Like, there's a kaiju. His name is Thermonucleodon. Yeah, uh, so you know, that's another one. Yeah. Like, so there's... um, You know, they're not always this with a that kind of thing, but, you know, I like strange names, and I cannot lie. Um, I mean, I just... I do. I like... I mean, like, I've got a character that I'm working on for a Latex Avenger concept called F-Bomb. And you can only imagine what that's going to be all about. So, um, Genius. Yeah, that's I like love... Brian, yeah, Brian Judge has that character. He does drop F-bomb. Oh, he... there's a character that named F-bomb? No, no, he's not called F-bomb. He's called a Crime Buster. Or oh, okay. Brian, you know, and he literally fucking says fuck every other word. Right. Well, there's one book out right now called The Motherfucking Fucker. Have you, have you heard of that? I got it. You got yeah, it? Okay, I got I it. Didn't, yeah, I didn't get it in time. It's dope. So you yeah, got to let me know how that is. Yeah, it is dope. It's called The Motherfucking Fucker. Brian... Yeah. Brian drew. It's a uh, wrestling comic too, but yeah, the way. fucking. Yeah. Brian drew a, a fan art or something of the convictor where the crime, uh, crime, uh, crime stopper is trying to like hold up this breaking, uh, this breaking, uh, freaking uh, like building or something, right? Because he's and, and convictor's like running to help him, and he looks at the convictor and says, "Fuck off!" <laughs> so <it's, laughs> I laugh so freaking hard <laughs> because it's just so it's just so perfect because it's so perfect of his character, like. Yeah, that's freaking funny. So. I was just talking about you last night, Dan. I finally did the interview with um, High Heel Gamer. Oh, how is she? Oh, awesome. She's great, man. She's freaking wonderful. Great live. Yesterday, just everything just seemed to go wrong. Oh, you no. know? Yeah, like just, just the whole day just kind of went wrong. I got locked out of my friend's house. So we were out in the cold for an hour and a half. We were trying to break into his apartment. I had to call the cops on myself. Just so an act, you know, so people wouldn't call the cops on us. Like it was a crazy no. night last night. So when we finally got the live going, you know, it was like you have no idea what I've been through. And she's like, you have no idea what I've been through because they were having technical difficulties. And I was like, yo, this Sunday is shit. <laughs> okay, but we finally got the live going. It was a great live. She's like, I watch her on on uh, what do you call it on Twitch like, almost mm -hmm. every morning. Her playing Sims, yeah. Great person, you know, I had a blast so with her, and her um, and her at um, producer. Like it was a great live, so definitely yeah. want to do that again. Yeah, <laughs> Pat and Jack are both really awesome people. So if y'all ever do the breakdown, it's a great show. They really mm -hmm. are. Um, that's awesome. Um, yeah. You guys asked earlier about characters that you created that you didn't use, and mm. I've had this group. That I've wanted to put out, but no one will let me do it. It's called the Swole Patrol. 
Bunch of roid out, roid what? Freight. Tool Patrol. <laughs> Tool Patrol? No, Swole Patrol. Like Swole SW. Patrol. <laughs> Wait, yeah. wasn't there? Didn't you have a version of these guys? Like one was called yogurt and something banana. Or was there something like that you and I talked about way back when? I think we talked about. We never did. Yeah. It. I think what we were going to do patrol. was uh, name them after different bangs at one point. Yes, too. that's right. Rainbow unicorn and yeah. uh, well, cherry blade, cherry blade, right? Cherry blade yeah, was the other we one. Want to name them after different <laughs> bangs because like yeah, you know, energy drinks was. working out go to yeah. hand. Yeah, and maybe animal head characters. Oh, sorry. yep. I, I really, but they all had to be in like speedos the entire time. Like, they of course, were, of you know, course, kind of ready at all, all times. But they would like go lift, and then they would fight crime. And so that was like the whole purpose was they would like they would just you know, be on like stage, Coleman like, and Jake go out, and go fight crime, <laughs> and then they'd have to eat lots of chicken and rice. And I could, that would be great. <laughs> if they couldn't get the gym, they had their they would have their um, their uh, shake weights, you know. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's freaking um, funny as hell. <laughs> it, it was all based on this. Uh, so Brad and I, we play uh, Star Wars Online, like the the Star Wars Online game. Mm -hmm. And Terrell always plays light side characters, and we always play dark side characters. But he refused to like come join us in on a game. Dark so we made we made uh, soldiers that would go out and fight. Like we were gonna play on his side. But our soldiers didn't, you can, you know, turn off all your clothes. So our soldiers were like naked without, we had just our underwear on. And we spent the entire time learning, like there's a fist bump, you could punch the air. So we figured out how to perfectly time a fist bump. And we named our clan the Swole Patrol. And just like to, to really piss Terrell off the entire time, because he was running around doing missions for us. And we were literally learning how to fist bump the entire time. <laughs> That's where I got the idea. I was like, man, we should turn this into a comic book about dudes that just jacked and work on things like All right. what it, does the fist bump when they hit each other does it do like the whole clap so like a shock wave yeah, yeah. yeah. we actually had the motion of like the ham it was perfect we, it, we spent almost 45 minutes perfectly timing a fist bump it was amazing it was the best game i've played online um and that that's one group of characters they won't let me like do something with i really want to i wanted to put it in crit it would make sense. It's like a bunch of dudes that just run around fight crime in New Orleans with their speedos on. And they didn't like. It. I got shot down on the end. Yeah, they could beat up the New Orleans thug. <laughs> I know, right? I mean, uh, he's not copyrighted. I don't think. I'd yeah, be no, lying if I could knew fight that. him. Yeah, they could fight him. <laughs> so. As far as or, useless uh, characters, as far as useless characters, like I have tons uh, of them. That's not useless. So that's old. Awesome. This Look is at from that shit. 2010. That's cool as hell. That's no awesome. That's like from twenty. They made it to print, a, though. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, so they're not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I guess. Yeah, but I mean, well, then. Well, I listen. If you don't, if you don't like them, just send them my universe. We'll kill them. That's You'll what we we'll do, right? <laughs> yeah, we just send them over to the Victor's universe. We'll kill them <laughs> when you when you the, don't want them. <laughs> yeah. You can take out the two puff marshmallow yeah. man. Yeah. And, uh, he says he signs, he signs up for the murder death kill, and he's like, uh, but not me. Yeah, right. my character. Oh, and I'm yeah, like, okay. I was like, okay, Dad. Absolutely. Yeah, no, kill them all. We'd have fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. This character's not useless. I just haven't figured out her role yet, but this is one of the characters that... Oh, that's badass. That's her role. She's going to beat somebody's ass. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. Jesus Christ, dude. That is cool. Yeah. Like that's Shiva. who I've been trying to find a spot with. I've got three more characters. Like I said, creating characters. My first Kickstarter kind of took care of that with the highest tier. You can create your own characters for a lot of people took that tier and created a lot of characters that I want to use in the book. So that kind of helped me expand my universe even more. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Hey, Dan, I'm going to rename that character so so I don't hurt your IP. Well, you can have whatever you want to do. Yeah, let me just put it all in writing. It's cool. We'll be how, does the, how does the rubber Avenger sound? <laughs> or the... Um. Or the latex revenger. The latex revenger. That's pretty fantastic. <laughs> I like that. And now I'm curious how bad the murder is. <laughs> it's gonna be uh, yeah. I have this whole dialogue scene written out between them. It's great. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait. Well, don't talks make about it, personal don't protection. Worry. Talks about nine nine percent, eight percent perspective, your per, your protection and nice. Oh yeah, it's got a whole thing in it. So. You don't ruin the IP too badly. I have a crossover with Halloween. No, no, not, not at all. Year. That's why I want to rename them. So okay, we'll switch the colors on it too. That sounds cool. That sounds fine. 
That's hilarious. <laughs> People are going to be coming up to me at conventions. So did you know that the dude from the convention totally ripped yeah. your character off? Yeah. 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 Asshole. Yeah. What is this asshole? Yeah, what is this guy? He totally ripped off an original prick. <laughs> so, no, I'm not going to get into it. No, no, no. There's something. Well, I'll tell you guys a story offline about one of my characters being. He's going to have a beard, too. Oh, a beard? Boy. A beard or a beer? Oh yeah, yeah a, beard. a beard. Yeah, a beard. Yeah, nice. <laughs> um, oh man. Oh, <laughs> and, and here we get to the point where we're like, well, <laughs> kind of cross some, kind of cross some bounds. Uh, yeah, yeah. Here my, we are. <laughs> the, uh, but my beard. Uh, the. Uh, <laughs> No, uh, I'll tell y'all a story offline later about a character that, of mine that's getting poached right now. So, oh, no way. Later. You yeah. know what's funny? So, that's I just actually right heard of another guy that I was following. I don't know if you guys, um, African writer, he got the book called Bold Saga. Um, apparently, he's going through a situation where he had spoke to someone and they uh, told him, you know, instead of copyrighting your thing, wait until you're important enough to copyright your material. And apparently someone else went out there and copyright his material. Like, got yeah, his stuff. Well, that. the minute you, realistically, the minute you draw something or put it online, it's it's protected. It's out. Yeah. The instant you, you do time, that. You got the time uh, stamp to prove it, it's yours. Right. Yep. yep. You know, I've got uh, two situations I'm dealing with on that, pro on, that, on that front right now where I have the time stamps to prove my stuff and I've got to make some decisions here pretty soon mm -hmm. how, I'm gonna, how I'm going to uh, handle that situation. So, yeah. This was time. a merch situation, right? Everybody no, that was, that's another thing. This oh, will, I'll, send all, I'll send y'all a group message. Uh, I'll send yeah. y'all a group <laughs> message. You'll, you'll be like, what? Anyway. Um, but man, but creating characters is like the best part of this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, back to the original concept of this yeah. whole thing, man, I love creating characters, whether they're weird it's or fun. fucking, mm -hmm. yeah, man. Um, I mean, I got a character named Dr. Fucking Biclops for crying out loud. He has two <laughs> eyes. Two eyes. The two eyes. He's called Biclops. The doctor, the Biclops. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I'm done. <laughs> okay, this was like my second project, man. This was called Masters of the Obvious. The guy there, yeah. this guy, that's, that's Dr. Bike Biclops. Oh, he's got a handlebar mustache. Yes. Yes. It's his brochure stash, as we yeah. called it. So uh, it came with a, it came with a uh, restraining order and a minivan. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the, the robot here is Dorculon. Okay, he's the indentured geek robot. The woman right here, that's the visible woman. You can't miss her. Okay. Ooh, that's the uh, visible, visible woman right the there. Visible the yeah, visible woman. The visible woman. And uh, <laughs> the, the the turtle, his name's LeBron, the snapping turtle. Don't make him snap. You wouldn't like him when he snaps. You see him. This is and uh, he Too grows much. big. And then that's the amazing Todd right there. What's amazing about him? What's not? And they flew around yeah. in this uh, <laughs> and they flew around in this uh, battle toaster over here called the USS Screensaver. So I, mean, yeah. I love the uh, I, I love the the you know the combination of all the characters though looks good very close. very uh, challenges of the unknown yeah yeah so it's yeah. very cool very very yeah cool. so that was my second book that was my second uh, creator owned project that I did after Latex That's Avengers awesome. so anyway oh, it's a fun project yeah I yeah. can yeah, definitely <laughs> definitely for that yeah, was yeah, awesome. definitely yeah, creating characters like fun. That. I love sometimes, it. like, you have, I don't know if anybody else, I mean, Chris uh, explained that he has, like, NPCs and stuff, but sometimes, like, when you have a story, and sometimes you have to create a character just for that specific moment in time in your story. And that was me. Like, I created, uh, I have extensive characters, but for Hunter's Moon, I created the character Chubbs. And Chubbs is like the man about town. Chubbs McGee knows everything. He sees everything. He's the guy that ear to the ground. No one believes anything he says, but he's the guy. Like, and, and you know, and he puts out a lot of pertinent information and uh, and stuff like that. But I had to create that character because I didn't have a character like that. I didn't have a, a character that was out there and that could fill in some details without having to come from the convictor or come from you know, one of the other major players in the book. And, and, but it could get out information that I wanted to have the reader to have. So, uh, yeah, I created him specifically for that book. And now he's 
he's you know he's he makes an appearance or a mention in all my books that's you know because he's that important now as a as a background character <laughs> that was fun it's Chuck McGee. yeah i based him off my neighbor my neighbor chuck is uh my next door neighbor like we're really good friends and uh and i said you know i said i'm gonna he, he's like you should have a character and make him like make him look like me and call him Chubbs McGee. And I said, I said, I said, I said, it's funny. I said, because I literally was creating a character for this book, but I didn't have a name for him yet. And I said, that's it. Chubbs McGee. Chubbs Done. is the guy. I love that. I love and that, then, I, uh, I mean, he's got merchandise. My neighbor does. He has a Chubb has a line in Hunter's Moon. He's got it on his shirt now. And all this shit. And so, you know, and then, you know, I had a news reporter. A news reporter. I, I had uh, that I needed that. Another background character I didn't I was lacking in certain background characters for certain tropes. I needed like certain things. You know, I needed like an April O'Neil. Mm-hmm. You know, I needed like a you know a, a man a man with his ear to the ground. I needed these kind of personalities. I didn't have them. Uh, so I created Mandy Lynn. I mean, that's just my daughter, my daughter Amanda. But she's you know, in she's in broadcasting and stuff like that. So I was like, perfect, you're the one. You know. And then of course I need a really jacked news anchor and uh that was like he's the head of Gut Seventy Two News, right? You ready for this? Dennis Swalencia. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that is he. Wait till you see him, Dennis. He's gonna make an appearance in one of the books. Yeah. He literally wears a suit with the sleeves cut off, <laughs> so you can see his arms. How do you see my biceps? Right. Still the 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 yeah. Dude, he's like news anchors. <laughs> you should do the whole stream like that. Oh, he's going to. oh, don't worry. I already got it planned out. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's fantastic. Yep. I can't with you guys. <laughs> yeah, making characters is fun as hell, though, man, oh, man. because you're not really you're limited by anything. Yeah. Shit, I made a whole gang just to have them all murdered. Right. <laughs> you know, so whatever. <laughs> I sacrificed sure. Kung Fu Sulu in the first issue. I'm regretting that now, but yeah. you know, yeah, you can always come back. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Lizard's, Lizard's multiply. Direct- yeah, Dennis yeah, yeah. picked up on that in the director's commentary when we were <laughs> doing that. He's like, "Hey, always. now it doesn't say the Cthulhu; it says a Cthulhu." So that's right. I'll that's pick right. Up on that shit. Thank you for that. <laughs> right. so, yeah, it's funny how oh, uh, you know you create characters, and as you're writing the story, or you know how the story plays out. And then the character dies. And then before the book comes out, you see this like fandom create around the character. Yeah. I'm struggling with that right now with a certain character in my book. And you know, we've gotten, you know, we had talks side sidewise, like Brad and I were talking one day, and he's like, How can we salvage this without hurting our story? Um, because the story's written and I don't want to divert too much off of the role play. And I was like, Well. We have a lot of spaces where it would make sense. We couldn't bring the character to the front, you know, and make him very prevalent, but it would make sense for him to be able to come back and do this and this and this. So we're working him back into the story because even Natalie was like, oh, he he doesn't make it past this book. I'm like, well, he does, but he doesn't. Like, you just don't see him for a really long time. And she was like, oh, he's like my favorite one. I'm like, I've been doing this crap for years and I just find out like all these people like this one one guy. <laughs> I'm like, if I had known that, I would have, as, as the DM, would have been like, "There we go. There, there, there there's my lunch pin right there. We're using this." I didn't think anybody would like him. Not at all. You never know. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. I'm really bummed that uh, that finding out, you know, three years in after I've already decimated this character a bunch of times. I'm like, really, people like him. Well, and it's funny, he's that. the most evil character I have. Well, I mean, look, <laughs> you just throw a character out there, and next thing you know, it becomes popular, and you're going to make stupid books about it. Yeah, I know. You know, <laughs> it. You know all about it. Like, hey, this dumb character, this guy, he's, he's an Australian guy with a freaking stupid wolf helmet. Looks like he stepped off a freaking G.I. Joe. I'm like, that guy's really <sighs> awesome. I Everyone's miss him. drawing him. Yeah. I miss him. Everyone's yeah. drawing him. He's coming back. Don't worry. <laughs> But yeah, no, I hear you, man. And then you don't you don't know what's gonna be popular. That's the thing. As a creator, you don't know. Yeah. Sometimes you draw something, you're like, this is gonna be like people are gonna love this. And then you put it out there and like no one gives a shit. Like <laughs> but then you put out something obscure, you know, like something just off the rails and thinking that nobody's really gonna care about it. And you put it out and like it makes you know everybody cares about it. You know, and and uh no, I I totally feel that. 
I got to kill this character. You know, why do you guys want him? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. You're like, this guy is not supposed to live. <laughs> <laughs> Is care about what I want you to care yeah. about. You know, yeah, exactly. Like, I'm like, got no choice. Hellwolf, Hellwolf got a promotion because he got popular in my <laughs> <laughs> like, He wasn't even supposed to be in Hunter's Moon. <laughs> he had nothing to do with it. <laughs> there was uh, one fan art that came in on the contest for Zaka, and I put it in our group chat, and Brad messaged me and was like, so I'm kind of in love with this design, and I'm really mad that we didn't What's go up, to this D? Office. We were talking about you. All bad. And uh, he was like, "Can we somehow work it in that like Zaka's like a secret gangster? Because there, there's a, a picture and it's like raining, and Zaka's lighting a cigar." Yeah, that's a badass picture. He looks it, like he's man, it through. And it was just yeah. freaking oh, man, perfect. Man, and so, crazy. so Brad's like, "There's room in the story. You have other gangs. Could like he be a gang boss now? Like, can we just make that happen? Because I kind of." And so, yeah, Zaka's like totally getting an upgrade somewhere in the story because I, uh, um, the Gut City Tridents have an opening for later. I'm just, saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, I'm not giving spoilers away, but I think it's been pretty obvious. What happens with that opening, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get an opening for like nine members. <laughs> you forget. I've seen the pages. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, uh, to, be, to be fair, all the gang members have their own openings. <laughs> yeah, true. True. <laughs> they all get new things, new things to uh, breathe from. <laughs> so, uh, I am really excited in, in this book coming up for people to see like different sides of my characters. So, like you're starting to see it now with the art that's coming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've talked heavily about with Crit Five. It stays true to what Crit is, but it does take a, a turn at one point. Where HKP, yeah, you know, things go south, and I'm uh, now and that's the page we were talking about where like you walk in this hallway, there's just blood everywhere, and one of the characters has has just lost it. You know, emotionally, he's been pushed to this limit where you get to see what happens when you piss off one of the strongest guys in my book, and uh, the floor doesn't doesn't like it. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it that way. That was that was my favorite piece to draw. Was that one, Jason? Uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna, actually really happy with how the panel came out after erasing it. Be. Good, good. That way. Uh, yeah, just uh, D. Um, Hong Kong Philly. He survives. He did. He there we go. He he survives uh, from one panel to the other. Uh. <laughs> he survived at the beginning of the page. Yeah. <laughs> He survives uh, longer than the he's fine. Other. He can literally walk it off. It's no problem. So, <laughs> I promise. The brutality in his book is like unreal. Is it, is it like a Monty Python, tis just a flesh wound type yeah. situation? <laughs> he, it's more like something really bad happens and he didn't be like, it's like, I can't really say, but yeah. you know, it's the convictor is a mean prick in this. <laughs> he's very, very cruel and, uh, so it's it's fun. It's, it's so it fun shows. to do this other, especially after doing like Hunter's Moon, where he's more of like getting his ass beat, you mm -hmm. know, and you know, and rallying back up and getting his ass beat and rallying back up, um, and to the point where he's you know trying to be like, you know, he ends up redeeming this character, and uh, now in this book, it's the opposite. Like a lot, of, and I said I, a lot. I will. I can say this: that a lot of the things that happened to the convictor in Hunter's Moon. From the Wolfman, he actually does to other people in this book. It's almost like a fucking toxic relationship, right. you know. Like you know, like I learned it from watching you. Right. you know? So it's a, yeah, it's a lot like that. So a lot of the shit that happened to him, like now the I wanted to show the flipping of that brutality mm -hmm. and let him be the bearer of it. You know, it would be the distributor of it. And uh, so yeah, it's it's really I. Yeah, it's it's rough. <laughs> it's really rough. Like I was saying to Chris, I'm like I was having struggling with putting like uh, curse words in it, right? Mm. I was really struggling with it, and I was like, you know, I was right. I'm like, I'm not gonna put the f word. I'm gonna put you know frigging in it or whatever. And I, and and Chris and my wife both told me separately. They said, uh, you look at the violence in this book, yeah. <laughs> and you're like, and you're yeah. you're like you're worried about. Whether you're dropping an f bomb when like literally this happened, you literally did this to another human being, and I'm like, 
I'm like, yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> so, like, good point. Yeah, I was like, I guess it's fine. So oh, I created me, Chris, and I got this uh, suggested for mature readers thing I'm putting in the book just for people yeah. to understand that. Uh, yes. you know. it, it just didn't make sense. I was sitting there like, I mean, I can ima- I can understand with Hunter's Moon questioning the vulgarity because there's, well, there's violence and stuff. There's nothing that I wouldn't see on in a cartoon, right? Movie. Right. You know, it's a it, it just hits that line. With this, I'm like, literally in the first six what six pages, I think. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, things it's, are flying it's, off. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, I took I yeah, took that. Yeah, and I turned I it way first. up. Yeah, and it's hard to come back from that. Like I said, that I'm like this is literally the the tone now for these books going forward. Unless, you know, the convictor doesn't appear into someone else's book or that tone is different, you know, or or he's like with, with you know, with he with Caliber when they do their team up, like that tone might be a little bit different, you know, but the convictor series itself, like this book sets the tone like that is where it that is the book now. That's how the books always have been when I used to draw them for myself. So. I was talking about this, uh, I, I think Saturday, um, I've, I've been doing so many shows i feel like damn um i just kind of like lose track of who i've who i've talked to this week but um i was talking about how in certain stories you can you can sacrifice some of the elements of the violence and still have your story right so let's just like look at daredevil for instance as a series you could get rid of some of the brutality although he's a brutal fighter you don't necessarily always have to show that because he is a compassionate person in his own way as well, and he does have some of that. So you can remove some of the brutality and still do the character justice. A character like the Punisher, you really can't because that brutality is what really defines the character. And so I think you know, picking up a Punisher book and seeing the brutality versus like you know, like. Daredevil, right? You can you can see the contrast. I was trying to talk about with uh, my book how originally Crit was going to be that heavy in the violence and language because of what happens at the table. You know, at one point, I think Brad picks a guy up and slits his throat and then, like, literally just got... <laughs> Only people over 40 get 45 get this. <laughs> get this reference. Jinkata, <laughs> baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> That was the best movie ever in the eighties. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> when you were a kid, you're like this is awesome, and then you realize how stupid it is. But anyway, yeah, sorry, Chris. No, just saying. So, so like your your stuff, it's kind of cool that your character in his own books, you know, in your core storyline, you can focus on the brutality, so we understand that. But when you have the other elements in there, like the, I think the caliber and convictor crossover would be a perfect place to allow Caliber to actually show the brutality that he has. Yeah, only when he comes to my world. He gets all brutal. When we go to your world, it's like, that's... Well, because he doesn't have Boulder. And realistically, the reason we had to pull back some of that violence was because of Boulder. Victor's like, hey, look, you can actually shoot their fingers off before you kill them. (laughs) Brad actually joked about that. He was like, when I go there, I'll probably have to make some kind of joke that I don't have, uh, you know, my trusty sidekick telling me I can't do this. Yeah. Because there's no like, watch this. Like, the kneecaps, you know? then the chest. <laughs> <laughs> they can feel it first, basically. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. There's a, a part in book five where Caliber actually goes that extra length. And and um, he does it. And when he comes, like, so he, he kills somebody. I'm not going to, like, give away who it is, but he, he kills somebody who rightfully should die. And even says, he's like, you should die, you know. There's no reason why I shouldn't kill you. You're a terrible human being. Um, you're like irredeemable. That's it. And when he comes back out, Boulder's like, "Did you just? What did you just do?" Like, and he's like, "I did what you could." And that he does, and that's what the the weight that he wants to carry as the character is like. There are, you know, people in the world that are irredeemable and shouldn't be able to live with some of the like you know, they're super powered beings. What are you going to do? Lock them every book. Yep. You know, Absolutely. we're not Batman over here. Hmm. And so that's what he does. And Boulder, like, gets real mad at him. Right? And so, like, he was like, oh, man, when I go to Convictor's World, he's like, I can... I'm like, well, it is called, you know, 
murder factory. So yeah, they convict diverse and murder factory. Like that's no one knows what that really means, but you and I know, and that's perfect. But I ha- I had to make the convictor this brutal in this book because I uh, Chris, I told you, like we I have a particular there's a journey for the character. Like you're the only guy that knows it. There, there's a particular journey for him personality wise. And so it's important that I had to set the tone with this so it can reach a pinnacle, you know, and it can, you know, obviously be, you know, follow that story arc. Uh, you know, and plus it's the way I always meant the character. I mean, you can't go around and, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it's messy. You know, doing that kind of work is messy. And especially, you know, messy when somebody subconsciously tells you they want it extremely messy, you know, and so. You know, when you got somebody riding around in your skull, that's the kind of stuff that happens. But I, yeah, I had to set the tone because I want this tone, and uh, and it's fun to draw. It really is because you're, you're not limited. Like Hunter's Moon, I was limited because I, I, I always pictured a little kid wanting to read this book, like a, a, uh, my own kid. Like, it's like a werewolf. It's got ninja. Like it's something I really wanted a kid to read. This book, not so much. I mean, you're a parent. You want your kid to read it, you can. Uh, but this is the story that it was always meant to be. Uh, so. you know, I'm not Mike's a nice read, guy. I'm a terrible parent, so I mean, just take that for what it's hey, worth. You know what? But I read this shit. Now. Come on, I saw Me Robocop too. in the theaters, yeah, man. Exactly. For Christ's sakes. Like so, Robocop. Right. <laughs> I was no, like, I get eight, it. Nine? <laughs> so, We're only a few years off from each other. I mean, yeah. I watched all yeah. sorts of terrible shit when I was growing of up, you know, and my parents didn't give a damn, you know, no. and so. For me, my kids, when I put stuff, I'm like, here, check this movie out. And they look at me like, this is terribly wrong in so many ways. You know, I'm like, yeah. who are you people? You know, with your, with your no consciousness and whatever. Yeah. You know, they're amazing. Yeah. My uh, kids are first to say this is inappropriate to me before so I even see it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, this is inappropriate. I'm like, what? Dude, in Robocop, what? when they what? killed Murphy <laughs> in the beginning, right. I was like, bro, oh, you're just like, the kid. You're like, I can't believe they just blew that guy's hand off. Like, yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, I'm sitting here like, oh my God. <laughs> my my but, kid oh, will tell you he shot that, that guy in the dick. PG Thirteen, <laughs> eleven. I can't watch that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, I introduced her to my hero. She wanted to watch my hero academia because all her friends watched it. I'm like, it's TV fourteen, and she goes, well, well, my friends watch it, but she still to this day won't watch a PG thirteen movie with me. I'm like, wow. <laughs> like I'm so. Yeah, that's my kid. Yeah. I'm making me. <laughs> Mac and me gets, oh my god, that movie was very scarring. I still to this day am so sad that little Thank that you. little thing doesn't exist. I want it as a pet. That the little the little <laughs> thing. I don't know what it was, but it's cute when I want one. Didn't yeah, Mac to, and me. To the point of the brutality earlier though, um, yeah. I uh I mean I drew I, I wrote and drew Guy wears a rubber on his head. Comics. Everybody's just slapstick. You know, whatever. Yeah. Drawing the brutality was fun and big. It is so fun. It was so freeing for me. I don't. <laughs> I don't watch horror movies. I'm not into blood and all. It's just not me. I mean, whatever. I mean, it doesn't bother me. But you know what I'm saying. And as I'm drawing this thing, and like, I mean, here, just like, it fucking. There's eyeballs being popped out. You know. I mean, it's like. Because right, the book's out, so I don't give a shit to show anybody more. Yeah. Uh, the you know, there's eyeballs <laughs> being poked out, and yeah, you know, yeah, that's that's great. Man. You know, I mean, and I just I have love so eyeballs much fun being with poked the, out with the blood just shooting out. I mean, like yeah. a fucking like I was saying about the Monty Python thing earlier, which is blood, yeah. or like that. Do you yeah. remember Saturday Night Live when Dan Aykroyd was doing uh, what's her name, the Julia Child, and the blood just shooting everywhere yeah. through the whole bit? That's what I was thinking of the whole time. It's just blood just. Shooting out, and that's the thing. Like, right? It's freeing. Like, it's just there's no constraints. It could be over the top as much as you want it. And uh, you know, and I don't know. Like I said, it's always the way I. This this is always the way this book was. So, and I'm glad that I finally got myself around to it. So. I guess mine's just so watered down. Yours is watered down. No, Gary, yours yours is different though. Kids read your book. (laughs) You know, there's nothing wrong with that. I even like discussed on my. No one's dropping like, F bombs in Dennis's F-bombs? book, I'm sure. <laughs> Why no. do I want that? Why? Okay, yeah, but you could do that. You could one in the movie, right? <laughs> oh, one in PG thirteen, yeah. Just one PG thirteen, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all I right. Mean, Again, the scene, like I, I decided to go towards like the Dragon Ball Z more death scene because Dragon Ball, you have people that die. You even get people that get cut in half, but you don't get the gory. Pss- 
blood squirting out. You just see like the body part. Because even in uh, my first book, there's a scene where Clinton kind of like dashes through these guys and they're left in pieces on the floor. But you don't see like the blood gushing or anything well, like that. Sometimes so. it's about what you don't show too, though, Jerry. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of times it's what you're not seeing that is really selling the, the story too. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it goes both ways for sure. Like, I definitely like I, I mean, thought... I, I, cut, I cut people's heads off in Hunter's Moon and there was no blood. <laughs> 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 Whatever. Jerry, I'll tell you what. You did have bullets going through heads in that book, too. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. If, uh, if I was a good writer, I wouldn't have to read on blood and That was a bullet. I forgot about and, that. You know, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> condoms and, you know, chastity belts and all these weird things that I write in the damn Latex Avenger comics. So, you, you're better. You're good. You're helping children. <laughs> to be fair. Nice things. Yeah, exactly, Jerry. Yeah. Of course, to be fair. Shit. Come on, you know. You're doing great. In Hunter's Moon, those guys may or may not be alive. <laughs> Before they died. <laughs> so, I can't give any spoilers, but they may or may not be. There's a reason why there was no blood. <laughs> oh, the tramp. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. They do watch Demon Slayer. She's absolutely right. Yeah. Shoot, yeah. I've just been watching. Little kids Gabrielle's age watch. I'm like, what? They're watching Demon Slayer? She's like, yeah. Attack on my Titans. Too. Like, they watch <laughs> like, that what? stuff, too. <laughs> I'm like, yo, Attack of Titans, like, ooh. Like, <laughs> you know? But yeah. Kids are watching it. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, yeah, so I think we all have a different way of developing stuff, which is awesome. And I think, I I, I, I hope we all, uh, in the midst of a ranting, <laughs> it wouldn't be a phalanx without it. I think that's why people tune in. I honestly do. Just, I really think that's a part of the charm. Part of the charm. So, Just all take I, turns doing wrestling promos from the late, you know, from the yeah, you know, doing, oh, hell yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, I know you're not like, Razor Ramon died. I'll do a wrestling promo. Uh -huh. Did he pass away? Yeah. Did he pass Razor away? Ramon, yeah. yeah, Razor uh, Ramon, yeah. William he was on life support, man. Oh, he was taken off, uh, he was on life support, yeah. bad guy. Yeah. Yeah, Even bad Thunderbolt, guy. um, what's his name, Thunderbolt Ross, yeah, William yep. Hurt, yep. yeah, yeah, Razor Ramon was my favorite. Reza Ramon. <laughs> him and hey, doing the WWF, it was him versus Macho Man. Like that was some of the best programming oh, they had. Like, that man. was a really good program that they had with them too. Uh, the Razor's Edge. <laughs> yeah, and then they, and then he went to you know, and then he went to WCW, and it was just just as awesome. They shook up that whole damn place. But I met him one time at a comic convention when they were doing an NWO tour. Where they brought, you know, except for everybody about Hogan. I mean, you know, it was Nash and Hall and yeah. uh, Six and you know and, Bu and Buff, yeah, and Buff and you know a couple Gosh. other guys. And so they brought them all through the convention. And uh, Scott Hall was a really nice guy. I mean, he was very cordial. I didn't get to know him or anything like that, but he was a real friendly dude. Yeah, yeah so. he really turned himself around there too. Last oh yeah, too. DDP and really all that clean. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So. All right. Well, yeah, it's a RP cow. So, uh, yeah. So we're ending on that note, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, all right. So everybody's a little somber now, but yeah, we do wrestling promos one time. I'd love to do it. It's been a while. I'm a little rusty, but I can do it. I even put my shit on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can still, I can still fit in it. <laughs> Hilarious. I, yeah. I wrestled in high school. I have a singlet somewhere. There you go. That fancy wrestling. There you go. Too, you know. I wrestled. I amateur wrestled too. Just let me imagine you can get paid for it. All right. I didn't call it amateur. I actually got hurt. I went up in the hospital. Didn't even. I, couldn't I didn't even call it amateur. It's years. just called amateur wrestling. <laughs> the fact that professional wrestling is called professional is also hilarious. I know because. <laughs> I, I at least at my level, like you could go up to like Olympic level wrestling. Yeah, yeah, you definitely. What can, can you do in that? Oh, well, you can make more money, I guess. No, I got the work. <laughs> no, I got I got you United States title. I won a North America title. I won an Eastern Shores title. I won a world title. I won a shoot fighting title with. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yes, yes, you can't go very far, but you cannot be an Olympian. You cannot be an Olympian like Kurt Angle. Just... <laughs> <laughs> no. Kurt Angle was like UFC, wasn't he? 
No, no. he won the only, only in, that, was only in that movie. Shamrock was UFC. Yeah, Shamrock. Yeah. And then he switched. No, he Kurt Angle was legit switch. gold. Kurt Angle, legit gold medal Olympian. They, WWE's got another gold medalist now. This, uh, I think his last name is Noble. Jamie Noble. No, I don't know. Okay, they got this. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Chaz yeah, they got Noble. Chat, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, they yeah. got another Olympian in there now. Legit gold medals. Well, the WWE is where you know real fighters go to retire. So mm. that's exactly mm-hmm. where they yeah. go. You're absolutely that's right. Ronda Rousey, yeah. who obviously an Brock Lesnar himself. <laughs> Lesnar. King Velasquez. Oh, listen, <laughs> Brock, Brock is it? Brock's not stupid. Retires. Brock's like, Sorry. let's see. I'm going to go to UFC. I leave UFC, and then Vince throws him like a shit ton of money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like Brock's always been Brock's literally about money. He just mm-hmm. goes where he can make the most money, and he comes back. And that's like I get, I get where he's coming from, and it's you know. But yeah, Rousey, you know, you got knocked the fuck out in the UFC. You got to go somewhere. <laughs> so he looks I, I, uh, <laughs> so, that, that, that fight made me so mad. She danced around the dang ring, got knocked out so in two much seconds. shit, and then got spooled. I mean, like I said, you can't believe your own hype. And I said long, from day one, Ronda Rousey was one of those fighters that believed their own bullshit. And as a former fighter, and I'm nowhere not saying I was that level, and even close, but I was a professional fighter. The one thing you were trained, you don't believe your own hype. The minute you start believing you're fucking invincible, I mean, it's one thing for bravado and training, and but the minute you start thinking you're a, there can never be a day when someone's going to chin check you, mm-hmm. <laughs> is the day you get chin checked. Like, that's just yep. how it is. Like, you always got to train. You got to take everyone serious. And she just believed her own shit, and she didn't train for it. I mean, it happens. But. My buddy's kid uh, is actually a UFC fighter. He's uh, what? Not, he's nine nine times. Terrence. Oh, yeah? uh, I haven't watched him in years. I've been Terrence out of, I've been watching him for a while. Yeah. Hmm. Um, my buddy, he just got remarried like a few years ago, and uh, his stepson is now a UFC fighter and he's like nine rounds in like all over the That's place. Badass. Yeah. He's, he took out his first eight matches. Didn't even last like past the first round. Um, nice. he, he lost, he just lost his first match, nine matches in. I was like, dang, kid's a beast. <clears throat> well, unrelated. <laughs> I, I almost killed a guy at work because he said professional wrestling was fake to me. So I had that. That's one thing you don't say to a wrestler, a former. No. But you, that's one thing you don't say because I said, "Yeah, you want to look at my fucking X-rays from my back? You tell me it's fake. Let me know." I said, "Okay, let me suplex you the way I did everybody else, right here, right now, in the middle of this conference room." And then when you wake up, <laughs> you can tell me how fake it is. Right. <laughs> uh, choreographed, cool. yes. Scripted. Choreographed and scripted, yes. Fake. I mean, my man. back is my back is destroyed. <laughs> from only from professional wrestling, not from five years MMA. So, <clears throat> but it's, it's uh, official, guys. Four what? days left to this Kickstarter. Let's go! Let's go! And it's strong. How much? How close your other? Uh, how close your other stretch goal? Uh, like a hundred and ninety-six bucks. Chris, how close are you to yours? So I just passed my second stretch goal. I am three hundred and thirty-one dollars away. Sorry, four hundred thirty-one dollars away. Okay, awesome. From from that, and then uh, so at thirty-five hundred, we're doing stickers and pins. If we hit four thousand on this campaign, which we have seventeen days left, Mike, um, I'm doing four four pages of Mister Wizard and Friends. Yeah. By Robert Nick. Mister Wizard. Yeah. So. Cool. You gotta have Mister Wizard and Friends. Yeah, we gotta hit four grand because I gotta yeah. pay Robert to to do those pages, and it's gonna be. A, it's gonna be brutal. It's. I mean, it opens up with kid taking a shot at a guy on a roof and blowing his head off. So, you know. Jesus Christ. Is that, <laughs> is that the wizard part? Or is it Kid's the- a sniper in that game. And oh, then- so he's Mr. Wizard. <laughs> no. He can, he, Brad, Mr. He can touch you. He can touch you without his hands. <laughs> uh, From Brad a mile away. Mr. Wizard, yeah. He. Um, okay. He, he. He. He created the entire persona, of Mr. Wizard. And Mr. Wizard is a, um, he's like a southern cop. So he's, he looks like a cowboy, but he's a oh wizard. Boy. So he, the best way to describe him is like Gunslinger Spawn. That but sounds like, like a, that sounds like a sci-fi the, the channel movie. And made him a grizzled old man that smokes cigars. <laughs> and, oh, I know grizzled old men. And, and casts, you know, magic <laughs> all the time. I, relatable. I don't cast magic, though. I yep. do make sounds in my butt. He just but makes it explode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's not really magic. It's not really. 
<laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. All right, so right now, live on Kickstarter, we have the Elements Burden of Truth from uh, E4 Comics. You can go to uh, E4 Comics on Instagram and check it out. And we also have uh, Crit Intestinal Fortitude live also right now on, uh, on Kickstarter. You can go to Homebrewed Comics on Instagram and check that out as well. Both have the links in the bio, and both are obviously a part of the, uh, the SSB. We also have Celestial Knight, which will be coming to you very soon. Oh, let me show you this, Jason. I just want to show you. Let's go. Let's go. I have two of these. Yeah, mother. This is, a, this is the issue. This is 32 yes. pages of nice. issues. Yes. Isn't so, it cool holding it in your hand? Well, I was jealous of you because you have pencil pages. So yeah, I got 11 right. by 17 printed. That's first page. This is the cover. That is badass. This is the oh, ad page at the back. That's all dope. The stuff on the back. That's like old school comics. Oh, yeah. I'm well, going to have to do that now. I hate Chris, it. I know. <laughs> I know. Chris, I'm like, Chris, I said, only Chris has seen it. I sent it to Chris. <laughs> I was like, I, I was like, I know. It's cool. And then this, of course, is the Mo version. Oh, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And again, I got the ad page in That's the back. That's fantastic. Um, Where did it's you nice. It's three? really nice to hold them in your hand. Um, so I got two copies. One's mine. One is my editor's. So I'll give this to her this week, and we're just gonna try, you know, back and forth with the script and fine tune it. And then Chris, it's all yours. But uh, I'll drop it in my drive for you to take a look at the pictures and all the fun mm -hmm. stuff. But it's done. So hopefully it'll be in print and in awesome. everyone's hands awesome. very, very soon. All the art is done. Thank God. Uh, Where did you get that printed? Oh, these were just – I have a, a hookup at my local shop, my post office of all places, but they know me there, so I can go back there. A nice relationship with them. I just felt jealous because I was like, Jason has this fucking original pages, but I, I just wanted to have it and put it in a portfolio and just have each page. And then once the script's done, once you get the letters in there, I can get another copy. But this is between me and her. I could shift it to my editor, Here's and she can, you know, she'll know what pages, what panels I'm talking it's, about, it's and so I can fine-tune. That but, is yeah. why – this Crazy is why I, I this is why I didn't want to do digital because I didn't want to not have this. Like yeah. I like having this. You know what I mean? And uh, and it's just, but I would do the same thing. Like for the next book is is going to be digital, and and I'm I'm just going to print it out. I don't even, like like whatever. I'm just going to print the line art out and, and hang on to that. You know, yeah. just to have it. And uh, yeah, no, it's a good feeling. It's nice to hold it. It's it's you know, and I mean, I have. That, I had this other thing. Jerry makes fun of me, but I'll show you something. <laughs> I, from my understanding, like I should probably do something with these, but this is literally resurgence. This is all the cool. Uh, this is all the like. Oh, 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 you can't see. Oh, there's a guy with a round face. I can't show you that. Uh, <laughs> but this is like literally. This is all the stuff. Like here, I'll show you something that. I uh, probably should save this for Crossfire, but whatever. Uh, like, see, that's all. You've seen that panel. I put that up already. Cool. And these are just things I, I sketch out, and uh, this is it. This is that whole book, like right here. I have one for Hunter's Moon and one for this, because I just I I rough everything out, or I try to line up the pages, and then if it's one panel that I know I have to draw it a certain size, like I'll draw it really big, so I can just know where everything places. And or I'll draw at the scale, and sometimes I'll if I like the rough turns out really good, I like I'll use the rough and I'll light box it <laughs> onto the pa panel mm -hmm. page because if there's sometimes the, you draw you just rough it out and it just comes out like magic, you know. It just every once in a while it doesn't happen often, but yeah, it's a good feeling. Like I said, uh, you know, my colorist uh, Cristiano said that you know he'd have all the pages colored by the end of this month, which is amazing to me. Um, very stoked, and uh, so yeah, hope you get a uh, resurgence out to people. Uh, and well, I know I'll get it out to people in April, so that makes me happy. Yeah. Finally, <laughs> yay! Good hey, we're all we're all making progress. All right, look at us, <laughs> look at us, <laughs> so, look at us. We're so great. All right, well, I like I said, this day we we're ending now. We I think we dropped down to four viewers, <laughs> but uh. Seriously, uh, everybody that's hung out with us this entire time, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for blowing up the comments. The comments are um, amazing. Uh, I love the interaction. And, yeah, my uh, yes, brother popped the, in there too. This is one of the really one of the really better comments uh, that we have going. This is really great. And Dan, thank you for joining us. Thank oh, you happy to be here. Thanks for having on. me, guys. 
Thank you. No problem. Oh, always a always. pleasure to have Dan on. Board. Yeah, if you ever see that we're doing one and whatever, just ask. Like, I don't. All right. You know, yeah, you got us. You know, because sometimes I'm, I was so wrapped up on this. Like, there are these guys. Like, are we doing a phalanx? I'm like, holy shit! I never even thought about it. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm got my head buried in this freaking book. Sure. And I'm just trying to wrap it up because I was literally like two pages from the end. So it was like I was like, fuck, man. And then I put so much pressure on myself that those two pages became four pages. Not because I added four pages, but because I had to redraw them over because I put too much pressure on myself. Because the last two pages are so important to me because it's another character that I love. And uh, so I was, you know, so anyway. So I forgot about Phalanx and they brought up, I'm like, oh, so let's do this one last minute. <laughs> so, here we are. So, but thanks for everybody joining us. Thanks for everybody tuning in. Episode 16, developing a character for comics. So thanks, guys. Gary, a pleasure. Thanks for riding shotgun when Chris was big timing. Uh, <laughs> Dennis, thanks for jumping in as always. Uh, of course, Dan and Chris, uh, if you uh, fix your hair. And uh, thanks for tuning Yeah, Yeah, I just saw, you, just saw you brushing your hair out of your face. Sorry, <laughs> surfer dude. I didn't know what you were doing. But, uh, bruh. What are you, like, Hong Kong Philly? <laughs> <laughs> no, I just have long hair. And yeah. Yeah. All right, man. I knew what long hair is. I had that for like three minutes. I know what it's like. So. <laughs> All right. I wish I had it now, though. I'm really just like a little bit. But anyway, guys, thank you. Thank you for everything. That is another tangent, and we'll be doing a phalanx. Look for us in April. All right. And uh, peace out. I'll see everybody. Mm-hmm.